you want your friends to rise in whatever ranks it is, but there's a degree of their rise where they're like, mm, fuck that guy. Yeah. Everyone does that. Mm -hmm. It's just, it's uh, it's hard to get away from. I don't know, for some reason. They want to pull you down. Yeah, it's the crabs in a bucket. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, crabs I mean, at in some a point, bucket. Well, and then so we do that in the society, top, too. Hello, everyone. Hola, mis amigos. You're listening to Oh My God, Hi, Hijo de Dios. Hola. With me, George Lopez, porque sabe que let's do the show porque está calado. Let's do the thing. I gotta go to that dry cleaner. I eat my kid fell. Se pegó la cabeza. I gotta go get some Neo Spore Spore and Paul. You know who George is? Oh, I'm sure he's around here somewhere. What's his name? George Lopez. George Lopez. Oh my God. OMG. OMG. Hi. Oh my God. Hi. Your voicemail that you sent us this for. All these guys, man, you know, because you weren't there yet at the club. So there's, I did it on the, the last. So, so yeah. there's a couple of them. Let's see which ones are the best ones. Oh, uh, shit, the one you did on the phone, did, the one you left. So Jack Nicholson and Joe Pesci go to the Laker game yeah. back in the, in the 2000s. Uh -huh. And uh, they're sitting there at the big deal because Jack's always there. Joe has his hat. He's right. sitting there like that, you know. And then when they go to, uh, after the game, they go home to Jack Nicholson's house. Pesci met him there. And they go inside, and, uh, and uh, Jack Nicholson goes, Pesci, I'm going to have to ask you to leave. And he goes, why, you motherfucker? And he goes, because I have a young lady coming over. And I got to go upstairs and make myself presentable. And uh, then Joe Pesci goes, why, you motherfucker? She's not coming over here to fuck you. She's coming over here to fuck Jack Nicholson. She don't give a fuck what you look like, how you smell, right, what the right. fuck you're wearing. And Jack goes, nonetheless. <laughs> <laughs> nonetheless. 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 And then he goes, hey, Jack, you ever use Viagra? And he goes, only when I'm outnumbered. <laughs> he fucking goes upstairs. What about the, the one where he's got shit all over his nose, his shirt's oh. all white, and he's... So on a Saturday afternoon, about 4 o'clock, 4.15, I'm on the... 10th, 11th, 12th, 13th hole. The one that goes uphill. Yeah, on yeah. The back. Yeah. Uh, the one through the, the tree there. And and I'm in the middle there. A fucking ball comes flying over my head. And, and there's nobody out there. Right. You know, it's a late afternoon. Nobody goes out there. And in a no top like the ones I use, mm -hmm. I look over and Jack has a shirt that's like stuck to him because of all his sweat. Yeah. Like just stuck to him. <laughs> fucking coke dust right here. Fucking coke rings. Hair back, like wet back, and he and he goes, "We're gonna play through, George." I said, "Yeah, yeah, go ahead." Yeah. They fucking grinding their fucking teeth. Yeah, the little play. I said, "Hey, go ahead." Yeah, go, go, and then go. They hit, and then I went down to look how far they were fucking gone. gone. I don't know where yeah. these motherfuckers went. <laughs> I said, "Like in Greece, they just fucking took off." Yeah, yeah, yeah. The fucking just kept sky, going, yeah. But they, Jack, was a fucking trip because he wasn't that good, and he never played eighteen in a row. Well, he just bounced around. Pesh does that now. Does that. Like Pesh kind of just will do like, you know, three here, two there, yeah. and then circle back sometimes. Sometimes I'll see him sitting in the sand trap for like 15 minutes just messing so, around. So I remember this one. So Junior, the, the this guy Junior, uh -huh. about like 25 years ago, I think he's been there that long. And uh, he, it was his first week, and Jack Nicholson goes in there and he's smoking a cigarette in the pro shop. And Junior's like, fucking do I say it? <laughs> You know, yeah. he goes, hey, Mr. Nicholson, um, you can't smoke in the pro shop. Or what? <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> or what? <laughs> or what? Yeah. So, and, and, he's like, and he's like, uh, or, 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 you know, you know, the police, he goes, I'll take my chance. <laughs> <laughs> right? Yeah. Yeah. And then the next, the next afternoon... Who walks to the fucking pro shop with fucking Pesci? Yeah. Smoking a cigarette, blowing this. I heard you can't smoke in this motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> he's fucking walking. He's fucking going like this. Fucking blowing the smoke everywhere. The guy, yeah. heard you can just walk through there, like, you know, like, like oh an island. Listen, I carry the plant. Right. <laughs> or what? Or, or what? what? What will happen? Nothing. I, I yeah, heard nothing. you can't smoke in this motherfucker. He's fucking blowing you the smoke. Seen that, you've seen that clip of Chappelle when he first came back and he was in a. Like, I think he was at the comedy store in London, you know, the London comedy oh, yeah, store, yeah. which has no affiliation to ours. But there's like it's a real low ceiling, and his <laughs> eyes are kind of, you can't really see much, you know, like the, the spot is really bright. And some guy in the back is, is yelling, he's like, you, you can't smoke, you can't smoke. And he's like, what? He's like, you, you, you can't smoke. 
Chappelle's like, no, motherfucker, you can't smoke in here. <laughs> <laughs> he just keeps ripping them like nothing ever happened. It was great. The, I mean, the crowd went ape shit. They oh, fucking oh, lost it. Man. It's true. Some people can smoke inside. Some people can smoke. He, he yeah. smokes? Uh-huh. He smokes inside everywhere. He still comes to the comedy store and smokes inside. Who's going to say How long something? did he do, like two hours? The last time I saw him at the club, it was maybe two and some change. I used to fucking do two hours. I couldn't beg for my fucking life for two hours. Yes, yeah, I'd be like, you know, motherfucker, just kill me, man. Forty-five, two hours, fifty minutes, fifty nuts, two hours, hours is ten, nuts. To two me. hours for, and I would do two, and I would do two an hour forty-five. Yeah, fuck. And they and big places, and they would be like, uh, "What are you gonna do, man?" I said, "You know, set the clock at hour forty-five, or an hour thirty. Yeah, and I'll get off at hour forty-five. I did a fucking live HBO special, eighty-five minutes. That's so live. much. Live, I couldn't do it again. That's so much to do for a special. Because for a special, your, your energy's through the roof. You're doing so much more than you need to do when you do a special because your mind is racing like you're overthinking all of the bits, making sure that every, all the puzzle pieces. When you're doing a live show show, I, I go long on shows just if you're having fun. Right. But in a special mindset, your brain is like, I need to knock out these things. And they told me you have to be done between 85 and 90 or else guess what happens? I go, what? They fucking... Cut, go to fucking uh, yeah, they cut somewhere Ruth else. Baker with Robert Redford. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. But it's a lot. I, I, I did them live because I thought, how can you make stand up like more risky? Yeah. And I said, you know how you can? You do a special live. Yeah, it is. Where I don't think you could do it now because motherfuckers would be in there trying to fuck with you. Yeah, also. There's no respect. Uh, yeah, for, with the internet now. Yeah. So it's just the game is different on where specials go. Mm -hmm. So live was like, it was a must see event. Like people had to go watch it. Now the internet is like, I'll see no, it whenever I'm ready. I know. Yeah, it's up to the audience now, which is kind of, I mean, it's good, but you have almost no control on programming. When somebody's like, it comes out Wednesday, and people are like, no, it doesn't come out whenever I watch it. That's right. Mm -hmm. You know, in people's mind, they're like, it comes out when I need to see and then it. They, and then they look at ratings like uh, three and seven days or 14 days, oh, yeah. mm -hmm. where before it was solely like when my show started, just on TV, there wasn't yeah. streaming. There wasn't, uh, you know, even that was at the beginning of, of um, reality TV. Yeah. That's wild. You know, I, I, I don't know, maybe just me, because I'm not in the business at all, but it seems that all the good specials. Yeah, but you dress like you're in the yeah. business of fucking grumpy old men, motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> huh? you're, going, uh, you're going fucking fishing with Gustafson after the show. <laughs> Gustafson! <Yeah. laughs> you old putts. <laughs> they, uh... All the good. They taking a skin boat that you to the town. I love that. <laughs> the fucking virgin. All the there. good, the, the big comedians. You know, they did the special. They started coming out, and, they, and everybody wanted to watch them. Now it just seems like they have. Maybe I'm getting older. They have more sh more specials. It's like when you oh, go yeah. to the with you, less known comedians. It's like when you go. Yeah. Would you like yeah. to try our specials today? What are they? Fried chicken and a hamburger. The fucking specials yeah. every day. Wow. Yeah. I mean, yeah. you know, they're not special. They're, they're not special. Yeah, the they're, they're not special. And the comedians are using are not that. I don't want to say they're not that good. They're just not. That's what that he's well saying. Known. That's what well, he's saying. That's what, you <laughs> that's what he's saying. Yeah. Say it. Hey, I'm not that's the one that got saying. shot at by one of his own men. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right. So last week was out. Last week the dude shot. The, 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 the chippy. Oh, he was a cop, right? He was a chip. He was a chippy. I don't remember. The dude was, didn't no, shoot no, you no. when you had pulled a gun on the yeah, guy. Oh, the that was on the show. Yeah. Yeah. Shit, that was years ago. Yeah. 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 He was. You know, he caught the Night Stalker, right? He was. Wait, who did? Gil. You did. So Gil was a sheriff. You, uh, for so he, let's go through the whole thing away. No, <laughs> it's pretty good. So so he was in he was on the streets and up in East LA in that area up there, Hacienda Heights. And and a cop said, "Hey man, that dude to your parents and there said was. and said, this kid either gets off the street or he's gonna end up dead. Yeah. And they're gonna go fucking somewhere. And yeah. he went to Vietnam. He fucking went to Vietnam. Yeah. Jesus. I was 17. They signed me. Signed for me to get off the streets. He's going to end up Fuck, prison or death. Vietnam, man. And so then I, I ended up in Vietnam, come back, and things turned around. It was, it was all good. It's been a good life since. How long, and all were, you I've ever how long done, were you in Vietnam? I was there for a year. Is, is, that what, to, is that what a tour was a year? It, tour was a year. And those chicken man, shits dude. in the Army, they sent me back <laughs> on emergency leave. You know, in January, my I grandmother passed good. away. Huh. Uh -uh. And my, my grandmother passed away, and my sister was a good liar on her feet because they went and they told the Red Cross, hey, can you let him know his the grandmother Red passed Cross? away? The Red Cross? And Shit. so they said, yes, but you understand, unless the grandmother had raised him, that won't allow him to come back for the funeral. And she said, well, that's the only reason I'm here telling you is because she did raise him. Wow. Well, my grandma never raised me. 
And so they sent word back to my unit. Mm. My unit then says, okay. And that's all you needed was word back then? You didn't need yeah. to say, <laughs> yeah. Yeah, death cert- now yeah. you need a death certificate. Right. Make- yeah, no, they just said, hey, we got this news for you. Your grandmother died. And we had just been, we had had the shit shot out of us the night before. We're going back to pick up parts. And they said, hey, come in here. The first pig wants to talk to you. Hey, do you know Julia Castro? I said, yes. And they said, well, we're here to you tell you. Sorry. <laughs> 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 I just tell it my family. From the time I was 11 years old, yeah, I don't know how how we started doing this, but if somebody was talking about a girl, I would say, "Does she have big titties?" Yeah, but this is from 60 years old. This is from the time I was 11, and they would He's, pull me out of the class. They'd get me like this outside. I, I heard you. That's outside. a real question. Yeah. But it's, it's a, a legitimate like, like, question. Finally, He's, yeah. He's got me saying it now. And I, yeah. I, I do too. And if I don't do it. It's going to end the longest streak that I think other than... You know, yeah. Like, yeah. Than that, like but, 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 I mean... So they sent me home. That's what I... Yeah. They told they, you she was dead. They, they, they said, you can you want to go home? And I'm saying, I'm biting myself on the cheek on the inside. <laughs> well, like, yes, I want to go home. Yeah, yeah. So they sent me home and they said, we've got your personnel files right here. We pulled them all out because you've only got another month left in country. Probably won't send you back to finish that one month in country. So they send me back with all my all my papers. I went back. I remember my mom cried. She found my she found my personnel jacket because it was in with my dirty clothes. She couldn't wash my clothes. She found it. She started reading them, and she didn't realize I had lied to everybody back here. They never knew I was in combat. You know what I was doing, mm. and now they've got this stuff. And they're reading their medals and yeah, and so now, you know, the, she, I said, Mom, it's okay. I don't have to go back. I'm done. They're not gonna send me back. Then I get this fucking letter. It says. Uh, no. Oh, no. You got to go back. They made me oh, go yeah. back for another Holy month. Shit. They made One me month. go back. They made me. you do the, the whole 12 they, months? They made me do the whole 12 months. They sent me back to Vietnam, give me in another month. I was due to come back February. I got there first week of February, 1968, right at the beginning of the Tet Offensive. Oh. So I'm due oh, to come back God. the first week of February, and instead they held me there till March. Damn. You know, I, you know yeah. what, man? I don't know what I would God, do. Damn. I mean, I love this country, but but I'm not sure... What I would do, like I'm not made for. No, no. You were in a camo jacket too. I, it just you know. <laughs> <laughs> he, he doesn't want to admit it. He's a reserve. He's yeah. in the National Guard. Yeah, I'm. A, I'm still in ROTC. I think I'm. I'm just in the. I'm a, I'm but training. ROTC was was kind of like the the minor leagues for for the military. Yeah, it is. yeah. 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 They get you like in school. Doing, in farm league. Yeah. And my, you're marching on the football field and shit while everybody's uh-huh. out there talking to chicks at lunch. Yeah, my buddy did that. In col- my my first rifles. roommate in college, he was ROTC and got kicked out. Got kicked out of school and the ROTC, which is hard to do because the ROTC needs your ass. Mm-hmm. To say <laughs> they need people bad. What did he do? Morgan Reed never showed up. Oh, showed well, up drunk if he did show up. Was drunk wow. and, and never showed up. Yeah. So he'd have his, you know, he'd have superiors yelling at him, come, come and get him out of his dorm room. He, I mean, his whole life was needed structure, so it was good, but it never worked for this dude because yeah. nothing was going to fix him. He was on his own little planet. So, so, so guys that are on their own little planet, and then they go to the military, and they got long hair, and they cut their hair, and then they kind of deprogram you, right? Where, yeah. where you laugh, and the guy fucking kicked you well, in your yeah, ass. Yeah, you were yeah, laughing yeah, at him, yeah. and he's like, what the fuck are you laughing at? Yeah, yeah. And they're, so they're breaking you down, and then you become, we all become the same. We all, yeah, you yeah. know, and then all the same. They give you all think the same. They, I don't know, propaganda, what they do to you, but all yeah. of a sudden... It's the army way, and you got to do it that way. You know, you, you believe in it. You believe, and it, it's not till after I came back that I was in Germany, and I said, you know, war is hell. There are no winners in war. Nobody wins. Either side, nobody wins. Everybody has people dying. Everybody has family. We have people that love them. And yet, we go over there, and we do this because they're asking us to. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and and you don't think twice about it. When you're in the middle of it, man, all you can think about, hey, we got to take care of business. You know, you're guarding your partner you're guarding you you want to stay alive you're fighting to stay alive how often were you scared were you scared ever can you forget that you're in vietnam no by just doing your job i don't think i don't think you could no No, yeah because when you every day you look out yeah it's there it's there there. i had an old pilot uh that had seen me on television doing police work here through the department he got in touch with me and he said i had to talk to you he says weren't you weren't you ever afraid because all you did was laugh he says, that's all you ever did. And I was a crew chief on a helicopter. So essentially, when you're up there flying, you're shooting a gun. That's all you're doing. And he wow. says, and we went through some heavy stuff. And I said, you know, Mr. Johnson, I can still hear you saying, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. He's in a hover hole. You know, <laughs> we're, we're, we're just hovering. Yeah. He yeah, says, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. I can God. hear you saying, oh, my God, oh, my God, oh, my God. 
He says, and all I can hear you is laughing, saying, <laughs> it's okay, Mr. Johnson. They're just throwing softballs at us. You just keep flying. You're doing good. You know, and, and he got us out of it, and I owe the guy my life. You know, he's the one that got us up and out of it. We're taking all this shit. Those were before Blackhawk. Those were yeah. just... Those were just I know those are those are like the 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 Hyundai's yeah. of the sky. Yeah, and, and what I, and they I didn't even that. bring them back. They, off the aircraft carrier, they ditched them in the water. Yeah, yeah they got rid of they them. They threw them in the water. And, with and the I, think, I, was, I was too stupid to be afraid, you know. And, and, I, and I'd sit there after you, you know, you're, you're going hot, then you you're breaking away because you're going to come back and make another room. You're saying, "Oh dear God, just let me get through this one." Come on, you know, please God, help me out. You know, you get through it yeah. on the way back, and but once you were away from it. You're all good. It doesn't matter. It's just like walking down the block again. Well, you bunch of young kids is all I can ever think about. It's so, like, w- w- are you sneaking away trying to see girls ever? Over there? Or yeah, over, over there. there. No. Never? No, no. You, we, On leave, though. Well, no, I take that back. Yes. I was going to yes, say, it's, all, it's you, a bunch you, of 19-year-old you, boys. You, oh, yeah. yeah. You, you'd go into town, and it was restricted because it was a heavy 4 to 5 VC bait, you know, where we were at. A lot of, so you're allowed to go into open storefronts mm-hmm. if there were stores. You weren't allowed to go off the street. And really, if you had the time, and I didn't get to go into town that often, but when you did, you couldn't wait to get off the streets. Right. You know, just go catch a little, you know, hey, buku, bang, bang. Yeah. <laughs> buku, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> shit, all right? <laughs> buku, bang, bang. Bang, bang. <laughs> buku, bang, boom, boom. Yeah, bang, bang. Yeah. Any and, and these little kids, That's they would memoir. steal the shit out of, you know, they just... That that movie, uh, Good Morning Vietnam, uh, yeah, Robin Williams. Williams. Yeah, the way the kids steal shit. That's just the way they were, Where, you know. And I didn't realize that they, you know, you're leaving little pieces of shit. Well, they're they're doing what they got to do to get by. So we'd go by and get boxes of sea rations, and put what was in those? Oh, sea rations were canned meats, uh-huh. ham and eggs, meatloaf, bone chicken. Uh, there were vegetables in them. Some of that shit was good. <laughs> I was going to say, I guess some of it's got to be all right. Yeah, yeah. I, I trade around. I love the ham and eggs. And, and, and so it's in like a tin and you open it and <clears throat> you yes. heat it or you, yeah. ju- you just open it you and could, eat it? If you had time to heat it, you'd heat it. Sometimes wow. you didn't. And you had these little uh, P38s. They're a little can opener. Just a little small thing. Went around. Oh, the little key like Yeah, that. open mm. it up, eat your stuff. So you'd take a case of them in a case. There was 12 boxes of sea rations. And so... You'd leave the box in the back of the Jeep or in the back of the truck so they could see that it was there, knowing that they're going to steal it. Oh, yeah. As like, I just take it. Yeah. Fire on yeah. Take it. The free no, you'd put a smoke <laughs> grenade in there. And oh, man, that's awesome. <laughs> yeah. Open the box and poof. That's like when you go to rob a bank and you, you, you go, look, oh, man, bam! Yeah. And right, yeah. Fucking put the dial over Put you. smoke oh. on them or give them, uh, they love candy, so you, X-Lax. Give them X-Lax. Oh, my God. <laughs> you're, you're different. It's a different world, you know, when you're doing that stuff. Yeah. And just watch them. And they'd run around. They'd run fast. There's no way this fat ass is ever going to get I was thin then, but I'm not going to chase anybody. So they'd run, and then you're... you're and then you can see the smoke coming up, and then, you, and then oh you'd God. see him run around. You buku number ten, new number ten GI, you know, and then you know pumping you off, but didn't hurt anybody. It was just just for all, fun. Yeah, yeah. How old were you? How old were you? I was eighteen. I just yeah. turned eighteen. Eighteen. Oh, yeah. I turned eighteen wow. November twenty ninth, and I was there the first week of February. What did you do on your eighteenth birthday? Do you remember? On the actual day of, like you were probably still in high school, right? Yeah, I was. I was a senior in high school. You remember, Grant? I don't I remember. Do. Mm-hmm. What did you do? Uh, I went to Buffalo Wild Wings and from Minnesota <laughs> with my friends. That sounds about right. <laughs> oh, shit. Oh, I think yeah. we went to Hooters. I'm almost positive we went to Hooters with my buddy's dad. I, think I was, to I was in uh, Chicken Wings. You got I was in Fort yeah. Stewart, Georgia. I was in the Army by myself. You know what I did? Huh. I went with the guys I was playing baseball with April 23rd, the day of my 18th birthday, Went to Hollywood Boulevard to the Pussycat Theater and we watched Deep Throat and the Devil and his Jones. Fucking cochinos, eh? <laughs> Still in high school, man. <laughs> My heroes. And then we had the first baseman, Eddie yeah, Rinkos, this big dude, and he would laugh like, <laughs> and then when they were fucking, he would just be laughing like, hey, shut the fuck up. <laughs> They'd never seen, I don't know, if you know, no, I'd never seen a porno. How was Deep Throat? It's like the iconic one, but I don't know how many people actually see it. It was a good movie. <laughs> I think it was, tons I really, of people saw that, right? It had but wait, it was on, da, 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 not, it it was on Hollywood Boulevard? Yeah. Or, yeah, it was on it Hollywood Boulevard. It had that music. Da, 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 yeah. That kind of shit. <laughs> soundtrack. Boing, By the way, I, yeah. <laughs> I, I, I got to give the other side of it, okay? So I messed with the kids. Nothing serious. Never hurt anybody. Were you going to go and get some American motherfucker did, with me? Yeah, gonna, yeah, but yeah, I did side. help start an orphanage over there. And I wrote back, 
the city that I grew up in, Pico Rivera. What do you mean? You left all the kids in one fucking little house? Yeah. No, no. They, <laughs> were, <laughs> they were living. <laughs> it it touched my heart when we saw these little oh, kids. Awful, eight, eight years old, teaching them how to protect their village, mm. you know, with Uzis and any gun that they could get their hands on. So then the guys that I was flying with, everybody just took it upon themselves, rode home. I rode home to my family in Pico. They put it in the local Pico press, you know, in the Pico paper, and asking for help. So I got clothes and stuff sent to me. We helped start a village, uh, a little orphanage back there. The orphanage is still in existence today. Wow. They're still supported by the same guys that... Uh, same kids are there. They're fucking 75 years old. <laughs> yeah, yeah, They're yeah, still yeah. there. They never, got, they never got out of the way for kid to get them. <laughs> One of the kids was a little girl that is now uh, married, alive, and well, living in Huntington Beach. Is that big Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Probably not because you're chinita. Probably not. And, uh, Probably long nipples, well. but not, nothing. Yeah, yeah, nothing yeah. Else. Heavy, heavy long nipples. Oh she uh, <laughs> She's wanted to thank people, you know, because she made it out. You know, she was part of the orphanage. And she's here now. That's she wild. That's insane. Do you ever dude. go in the middle of the night and scare her? Yeah. <laughs> 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 you get a dollar, you're going yeah. to a window. <laughs> 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 I only really got the smoker name. Hey, hey, so, so, um, I don't know, man. I just don't. I, you know, it's fine. I'm not fascinated by by asking you because I know I know that I I'm not sure there were no like. Um, IED, like none of the stuff like they had in, in Afghanistan no, where you're walking no, and you blow yeah. up. No, and, and I didn't worry about that. I, you know, they, they didn't booby they, trap back they then. They had mines oh, back then, but I wasn't on the roads. I was up in I was up in a helicopter, you know, so land and get back to my hooch. And the only time I was ever in a vehicle was when we had to go pick up more ammunition or go make a trash. What would you take? Right? Food to the guys, pick up trash, like get down low, dump all the shit, maybe take a guy with you and get the fuck out of there, like fly in and fly out. No, no, I'm taking. That's the only time I was in a vehicle. In a helicopter, two kinds. I was there. Number one, for the first seven months, I was in what we call slicks. These are Huey helicopters that would go in. We would resupply, take them either food, their mail, ammunition, new troops. We would extract wow. old troops, wounded troops, dead troops. Wow. So insertion, extraction. That's what we did. At one time, we were flying uh, defoliation. You know, this Agent Orange that you hear about. Mm -hmm. They put a big fucking bladder inside the helicopter with oh my God. sprayers out there. Oh. And then we'd fly over rice paddies. Matter of fact, that's the only time I ever saw <clears throat> somebody that I ever shot. Because when you people are shooting at you and you're shooting back, all you're seeing is muzzle flashes. Well, now I'm flying over a rice paddy right by the end of these dikes that are in between them. As we're going, all of us, and we're, you're flying slow. You're low and slow, and all of a sudden, some little ding jumps up and da, 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 hit the helicopter at least three or four times before I reacted, and I hit him. And when I hit him, man, he flew, bam. He flipped and fell and went back down. And as soon as that happens, you immediately have to drop smoke to mark the spot, and then you pull up and out. Wow. And then the gunships that are flying escort for you, they come in and, eh, with mini guns and rockets. And so that day... I just made a decision, man. I'm tired of running. Every time you get shot, you got to run. The gun, big boys with the guns come in. So I went and I said, I want to fly guns. So I went to gunships, and never saw another Vietnamese soldier or anybody South Vietnamese, VC, North Vietnamese that I hit. But then I did, and that's the only one I ever saw in the country. The rest of the time is all gunships. So is there a reason for tracer fire so they can see where they're where they're yeah. shooting? Yeah, so and I, I want to say something you can't. My see. memory serves me correctly. It's every fifth or every tenth round is a tracer. Oh. Hmm. Oh, I didn't know yeah, that. Yeah. And so you, so the other guys would come in after you guys to clean up, huh? They would. We didn't go in to clean up. Nobody went in to clean up. You did what you had to do. And I meant got, finish up. If there was, would they go in to make sure there was no other soldiers there? Is that why they were backing up? No. Like why would they come in after you guys then? When you put the, the gunships, as soon as you'd mark the spot yeah. where it happened. Yeah. First thing you do is you, you know, incoming or shots fired, and then. I would throw one. There'd be another slick behind me. He Just would throw to light one. Him up. So they, the gunships, we would then pull out the gunships and okay, somewhere between the two smokes, that's where the enemy was. Just -da 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 -da. so they just come wow. in with mini guns and <laughs> rockets. What was the caliber? Oh, what, what, what were you shooting? I was using M60, 60. seven point six two rounds, <laughs> and the M16 was uh, five point six two. And it was every five rounds for tracers. Yeah. And watch a Restepo, that thing. Yeah. And they said with that 50 caliber gun with a sniper, even if it misses somebody, 
If it goes by them, it'll sear their skin. Ooh. Yeah, that, that, it's going so fast. That, that 50 calibers is it's an ugly, big, vicious weapon. You know, we could never shoot something like that. You know, with what we had. That's a big, isn't it? It's huge, yeah. isn't it? Big it's massive. Round. Yeah, yeah. you yeah. see, you see them. You can't believe they go, they go I, in and come out of a fucking gun. That's so big. They, it, it, uh, those guys. I did the Harry Truman out there in the ocean a couple of years ago. And I shot the 50 caliber, and you're not even looking, you know, the ship, the gun is out there, but you're in here looking at a screen, mm. and you have the red thing, and you look, and you'll say fire, and you just shoot into the thing. But I go, what do you see out here? He goes, ah, and those guys are like, oh, man, we see some Somali pirates, and yeah. they try to come at us. And I go, what do you guys do? He goes, he goes Jordan, they, they disappear like in a puff of red, like, fap, they just... They're gone. They yeah, they explode. disintegrate. Uh, and they don't give a fuck. They There's run, a 50 cow bullet. Yeah, it's big massive. Go. It's the biggest thing I've ever seen. They yeah. ride up on us, and he goes, they ride up on us in these dinkity-ass fucking things, and they start shooting like you're pop, pop. And they're like, are they fucking shooting? Those guys have balls, man. They, they run up on the biggest ships. they fucking light them up. Yeah, they do. <laughs> we had... Uh, we went. You hear that, Somali pirates? Mm -hmm. well, you guys don't even have shoes, eh? Don't, <laughs> don't be running there. up on our boat. Well, yeah. <laughs> Flying guns, they gave us a mission that was to search and destroy pack elephants. The North Vietnamese and the South God Vietnamese damn. were using elephants what, to transport their food and ammunition, oh, wow. their weapons. So they said, okay, here's where they're last seen. There's a group go out there. So we go out okay, there. shoot elephants? Shoot elephants. And we went out, and what we did was we had uh, white phosphorus, Willie Peter, oh. in the rockets. So you'd Go in here, light it up this way, light it up this way, make another run, and light it up that way. So the only way the elephants can get out is... Oh, my God. You, you close them off the three clearing. ways. Shh. Yeah, and they'd say, okay. Here they you, come. Here yeah. they come. You guys get them first. So they allowed us. Mm. We had free wheeling 60s. You guys get them. And, and and remember, this is... So so there's smoke yeah. there's, there's, there's smoke here, and they're looking, they just see smoke, and they, they don't see smoke there, so they're running, they're other running out right that towards way. you. Yeah, towards, yeah. towards the open door. <laughs> and God, damn, this is... I think that's better than a circus, huh? <laughs> no, yeah, man. This is, not for Byron Belly, take notes, man. <laughs> remember, this is war, you know, and it's not something that I would ever do or think of. Or yeah, no, no. Yeah. Don't don't write me letters, animal activists, <laughs> but they're coming out, and then they're, the pilot's like, okay, you guys get first crack so we're shooting our freewheeling 60s at them and you hit them and a, and a 60 on that elevator just like flies you know yeah i was gonna say that can't hurt them that, that much that, wow. that, that inbound we said okay your turn's up now our turn then they'd come in and they'd hit them with rockets oh my oh God. My but God. all that ever happened with rockets is they they hit right below and the elevator just you just see the elevator just go boom fall over yeah. fall over sideways dead dead like shocked hit. I don't know what the fuck System we were gonna gone. go down. We were Stiff. gonna go down with the stethoscope. Yeah, you know, we just <laughs> we <laughs> take its pulse. Yeah. <laughs> See how it is. There's no head. Uh, yeah. you, you just go for, they, they go for the legs though. That's all. Nobody's they were doing, calling right? code blue. Well, with rockets, you're just shooting at you, it. Yeah, you're aiming at anything close. And it, back then, the, the the sights for rockets weren't that really. This was the sight for the rocket. This was the yeah. sight, and what you would do is they put a little circle with an X on the on the windshield. <laughs> oh, oh my God! So you ain't okay. Like there a decal. <laughs> yeah, yeah. They would just move it if it was oh, off. Like, no, yeah, put that right? sticker over here. You name it. You name it. Uh, over there. So you had to be yeah. more of a marksman yeah. than than I would say now. Maybe. Wow. Yeah, you'd you'd have to shoot it. Okay, let's see where that. Okay, now let's try it yeah. again. And, uh, I'm even. I'm like googling this as you're talking about it. I'm not even finding a lot of results about people talking about shooting elephants. Yeah. In the, like, I'm sure is, they didn't brag about it. But no, like, it's not I'm, I'm sure that was breaking news. This I'm sure that was military breaking. News. I'm sure that was military <laughs> secrets. I mean, that was yeah, like yeah. you don't talk about nothing. It. Yeah. I mean, and, and and it's and I emphasize that was war, not something that should be done. You know, you talk about it was ugly. There are no winners in war. Did you ever have to hand to hand somebody? No. No street fight. No, no. no. You were in the air. No, you think I, it was safer in the air than it was on the ground? Oh, I do. You ask See, the guys I feel in the that ground. Oh, right? That's yeah. what my first thought was, because on the, the guys ground, on the ground shit. think just the opposite. They were scared to death of being in the air, and this fat ass didn't want to be in the jungle with scorpions and rats <laughs> no, and tigers. I, I'm with you. All, I'm, all up, I'm way up. Put me in the you sky. Know, blah, 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 blah. I'd, I'd come home. You know, I'd, I'd land, rearm, refuel, and then go back to my hooch where I had a cot and I had a, you know. So you'd be away. Yeah. But then also there'd be guys behind you, bigger Bigger, uh, bigger helicopters behind you, or to well, cover you? in the slicks. When yeah, you're, yeah. You always had gunship escorts. Mm. You know, you always had these gunships escorting with you. And when you're in gunships, you don't have shit following you. You're just gunnies. You're not gonna be. You're not gonna be going down and landing. You're just gonna be flying and shooting and then coming back home. How many of those things just fell on the? Uh, just malfunctioned and crashed on their own. Did that happen a lot or no? Uh, 
No, it's either pilot error or they got shot down. They don't fall down their own. So you first. could, they could shoot at you and, and penetrate the, the gas? Oh, uh, fuck, yeah. Oh, so yeah. a helicopter is just thin. You know? Yeah. It, it wasn't shit. So. That, but I guess that's what I mean is like those things must have been, I mean, no one's checking them down every time you take them off, right? You're just going. Are the mechanics there wasn't much yeah, to them. Yeah, there, yeah, yeah. We, we're, no, we're checking them. Oh, you are? Yeah, every day. The crew chief, that was my job. I'd get out there and check the helicopter out and make sure that it's all it's flyable. Right. I'm going to get in it. It's going to be flyable. Right. And you get it up, you get in the air. If it took rounds, well, then you come back, and now they got to patch those rounds up, and they got to make sure we didn't hit anything. Now, there's a few spots. You know, you if you lose an engine, you can still go down. You just got to find a place to land it. Uh, you lose your tail rotor, you're... You're done. You're, 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 unless you got a long runway to go to, you're, you're toast. You know, the drive shaft going to the rotor, you know. There's a few places that are really vulnerable, and especially if you hit the pilots. Uh, there were some dudes that were that were shot down that got that some some pilots that got held as prisoners, right? Yes, yes, And sure. they parade them through the street, the Latino guy? Yeah, there was uh, several of them. Most of them were uh, fighter jet jockeys because, you know, they're, they're the ones that got shot down. They saw them coming down. Wow. Uh, not many people... Survived helicopter crashes, you know, it's much. It's a shorter brutal. time to get to the ground, right? Yeah. You fall out of a plane, you got plenty of time. You don't have parachutes. You don't right. have parachutes yeah. or anything. There's not one parachute on a helicopter? No. Damn. But I think when you no. hit. I might bring my own. You jump They're like, what's up with that backpack? I'm like, no, nah, I just have a backpack. You know, we, you, you, we, we <laughs> get out, and just as you get, it comes out. <laughs> yeah. We had so armor <laughs> plating, armor plating, and flak jackets. Right. And I never wore them. Because you, know, you, you thought if you sat on them, I sat. Uh, did you oh, wear it? Let me yeah. ask you this: Did you wear it because you couldn't button it, or because you wanted to sit? <laughs> you motherfucker, no, no. Did you I you have an extension, no, like best. Shit. <laughs> well, you you're coming from you have an extra seatbelt. I've got I need an extender for the. You know, they're coming from below. They're not. Yeah. Gonna, you know, I think it's better to sit on them, yeah. man. Yeah, that's Can you smart. If they There's shoot logic. up there, it goes through the helicopter exactly. in your ass. Exactly. In your fucking nuts. In your yeah. fucking oh, nuts. I, you lay there. God forbid. The why would you want to live if that happened? Did you ever see someone get shot in a helicopter next to you or near you? I My gunner got shot. He took one in the back. But he, did he live? Yeah. He wow. lived. He got sent back to the United States. I, I'm, I'm assuming he's When I used to work during the day in Northridge at, uh, what that place, Tell and I, or whatever the fuck that was. Um, there was a guy named Dennis Stapp, S-T-A-P-P. And he was kind of short guy with a beard, and he walked in a little thing, but just, just, just a roly poly type dude. And then we were talking about him, and they said, You know, Dennis was in Vietnam. And I said, Get the fuck, Dennis was in Vietnam? He goes, Yeah, he was a tail gunner on a helicopter. Mm. So we used to go to lunch, and we're walking over, and uh, I said, Hey, man, you were in Vietnam? And he goes, Yeah, I was a tail gunner. I said, What is that? I shot, you know, cleared the roads. We went, I shot anything that moved. You know, the, the, the tanks were going down there, and we had to clear the way. I said, you shoot kids? He goes, maybe. I just shot wherever. Anybody. I protect either them or me. Right. I said, you, ne you never had any nightmares or anything? He goes, no. I was doing my job. Oh, it just and went right like, through. Wow, man. Wow. I, just, I was yeah. doing my job. That's what I was paid to do. It's going to be me or them. It's not going to be me. The only nightmares I've ever had about that, that place is I'm stealing a helicopter. Is what is it? Get the stealing? Fuck out. stealing, stealing. Hill. I wanted to fly so bad. I learned how to fly when I was there. Oh, wow. But I wanted to fly so bad. I'd always, in, in my, I'm always... Stealing a helicopter. I'll get on a base, and I'm stealing it. I'm starting it up, and I'm taking off and flying. That's your dream. All of you, do you dream still today about yeah. it? Yeah. Yeah, I still That's dream great. about flying. Let's get you a fucking helicopter. Oh, yeah. oh shit. Let's go steal one. I, I love bird. I used, I yeah, love bird flies them. When I worked homicide, we had our murder scenes. I would always go up in the, in the bird and take my own pictures. You know, like going does, bird, does bird fly helicopters? No, 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 uh, burr. no burr, 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 yeah, because he's he's so into it. For a long time, he was talking about how much he loved it, and then yeah, he was going to take a final exam wow. to fly independently, oh, yes. and COVID God. hit. Yeah, because I th I, I don't it was it's a ton of hours. I remember he told me one time it's an insane amount of stuff you have to do to get approved. That was one of the reasons I really wanted to be a deputy, uh, only because they took their pilots from within the rank and file. They wanted to have their pilots, they wanted to mm. bring them in, and they were already indoctrinated, you know, into law enforcement work. And I ended up going, as my career went on, my dream was eventually to get the Homicide Bureau. I didn't make it, I didn't get the Aero Bureau. I wanted to go to Homicide Bureau. A good buddy of mine went through the academy together, worked patrol together. He went to Aero Bureau. 
and he had been a Marine Corps fighter pilot. And so he's over at Aero Bureau, and he flies a helicopter, he flies fi- fixed wing. And one time he had to fly me up to San Jose on a case. And it's just him and I in the plane, the fixed wing. And he says, hey, Gil, he says, you want to take off? We're flying out of Long Beach. He says, you want to take off? And I said, yeah. Mm-hmm. So there it is, man. Pulled wow, back. Dude. I got in, pulled up, and we're flying. And I'm, God, this is the greatest fucking feeling. I'm up and away. So I said, okay, you got it. And he took it back. And I said, you know, God damn it. There's only one job I would leave Homicide Bureau for. I said, and that's for Aero Bureau to become a pilot. No shit. I didn't mm-hmm. know that. Never and, got it. Huh? Yeah. And he says, you know, there's only one job I'd leave Aero F- Bureau for, and that's the lateral over to Homicide Bureau. And he says, unfortunately for the both of us, he says, I'm not a good investigator, and you're even worse as a pilot, so we better just keep our fucking <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. where you are. Yeah. Yeah. Were you into, are you into crime? Like, a lot, of, a lot of people are into crime. You know what's so like funny that. is I, I, my... <laughs> I have cops and firefighters all in my family because I'm an Irish, you know, trash bag from Chicago. So it's like your whole, that's that's all, that's all your whole family is cops and firefighters. But I I, I never liked to hear about it because then I thought, then I, then I would know someone that was going to get hurt. I would always, I, I, every time I heard about like cops getting shot and stuff Mm -hmm. like that, I always, it gave me the fucking creeps because I thought about my family and then I was like, man, what if it's somebody I know? Because I knew too, we know too many cops. So I always got scared about hearing homicide stories. Who's going to take a shot? What criminal is going to take a shot at a police officer? Because if you're a criminal, you know, today, if I shoot a fucking cop, I'm, I'm, and they get me, they're going to Today, they do it all the fucking time. Today, they don't have any, they just don't do it. Because of meth. Methods right. out there, cocaine. Uh, they don't give a fuck. I mean, two Chicago cops that. just got killed, and one of them got shot with her own gun. They went on a on a on a, on a, on a, on a oh, domestic I I dispute this. call, I think, sure. and it was something about a dog or something, and it was just in the news. It was fuck tragic, and <clears throat> they went in there to investigate. I think it was a domestic call. I might be wrong, but whatever the case, and uh, you know whatever. Scuffle. Why are those the, yeah. the, the the most frightening ones? The domestic, well, because, because you got a guy that's irrational. They're fighting. Exactly. He's all hopped. Yeah, up, man, all you don't up, know like, what he's on. And yeah. you go to hook him, and then you got to worry about the wife jumping on your back because she really didn't want him to go because that's the breadwinner of the family, and I love him. And you, it's, right, they it's call on ugly. the they call the cops to, and then they want to hurt the cops when they get yeah, there because they're afraid not. they're going to lose. Yeah, and and plus, it's tough because you don't know what's going through his mind. Yeah, I ain't going back to the joint. I ain't doing this. Right, fuck right. this. Is he under the influence? It's a tough world, and with everybody looking Man. at you today, it, it's a tough. Tell tough. me, tell me, this is this is true. I saw this the other day on the internet. There was a video compilation of cops, patrol cops, when they pull people over, they touch the back of the car. Have you ever seen this? Do you know what this is for? Have you ever heard of this or seen this? To like leave a thumbprint. Or yeah, something? Like, I, I never I've knew that. that. So I, there's a video, oh, wow, a bunch of cops, man. when they patrol and they pull people over, they put their hand on the trunk, which is wild because I remember being pulled over and I, he tapped my trunk twice. Wow. And I was like, I why? why? I was like, why did you just touch the trunk? I don't know. And he, I just, just, he rolled right through the question, but that was what it said online was mm-hmm. to leave fingerprints in case something happened. I just, you, you know, never heard of that. No. See, okay, Thir- good. Cops are 38, 38 years, but in hindsight, the way things are now... Maybe that's not, why. Not a bad move. Like the, yeah, man. so you heard of it too, right? They leave yeah, fingerprints. I've never heard of that. I don't know how official. Just in case some shit goes wrong. Uh, look, I, it's probably just something that, if that's not true, it sounds too, you know, it's like, yeah. it sounds too it true works. that you're like, sounds it like, is true. To me, like, it's true. Sounds like something they ought to be training the academy. Yeah. Serious business. That's, that's, sure, because that's, then, then you find the car and sure, you go to right. the thing. And the, exactly. You know, you got to, you could see if somebody's yeah, like there a, now. My wife is into all that stuff, that like murder mystery and all that shit. You like that? I can't, I can't do it, man. See, I don't have, but you know. I don't like any of it. Yeah, I mean, I think you were too close to it, huh? Maybe I just think, think it, yeah, maybe Chicago that's too is like a not. Mm-hmm. It's a I, it was just, it's just, a, it's just. I, I didn't like the stories because I was like, is that gonna be yeah. someone I know? But Chicago's she loves that a dirty shit. town. Dude. It is. Not, it's gotten way worse now. Cops man. were, cops it's, were not so. Mario, the guy that had the place on uh, Sunset, you know, he had the uh, Roxy, and the other place right next door, uh, the Rainbow. The Rainbow. Who's yeah. that, Mario who? Mario, I can't remember his last name. It was an Italian. And they just opened one about 10 years ago over in Vegas. But then he died. Uh, but he had the ones right there. He's an old Chicago cop. And as the story goes, he was a money man for the judge. Mm-hmm. And got all that money that he had left over, came over here and turned it into a legitimate business. And he was from Chicago. Michael Mann, when he made the movie Heat. Yeah. Michael Mann's from Chicago. And he had a captain out here from Chicago, and they asked me if I'd help him out doing interviews, you know, uh, teaching yeah. Pacino and these guys, you know, how to do some interviews. 
And I told Michael Mann, I said, I can't do it with this guy. I mean, this guy's from Chicago. They put their hands on people. We don't do that shit out here. <laughs> and he says, ah, just go out there and do it with him. So we're doing this interview. And he brought with him a buddy from Chicago who's an old Chicago wise guy. And he's sitting there, and I'm talking to him. I say, hey, what's your name? Bill. Bill, do you have a last name? Yeah. What's your last name? Smith. Do you have a middle name? Yeah. I mean, he's just making everything hard. And I'm starting to get a case of yes. I'm saying, look, I ain't got time to be fucking around here. You know, we're going to straighten this shit out. Just then my beeper goes off. Uh, my pager. We used to use pagers. Oh, yeah. And I had some guy covering an autopsy for me. Because all of a sudden this cop, the, the retired captain, reaches over and smacks this guy right across the fucking chops. Hard. <laughs> and I said, uh, excuse me, I'm going to go answer this page. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so I go up, and there's a wall right there, and I answer the fucking page. And it's Bobby Tucson. Bobby says, hey, Gil, he's just like you said, it was a through and through the head, you know, no big. And then he could hear this guy screaming. And he said, what's that? Where you at? Give me an address. Where you at? We're rolling. And I said, no, no, I'm on a movie set. It's okay, Bobby. What this captain has done is he's reached out, he's got a handful of the guy's nuts. And he says, you have something we want, and I've got something you want. Oh, my God. <laughs> and then the guy, he asks him another question, and he squeezes more. And the guy, blood curdling scream. And Tucson's saying, God damn it, Gil, give me an address. We'll roll anybody. <laughs> I'm saying, no, no. And then Michael Mann finally, you hear Michael Mann saying, all right, cut, cut. Okay, that was good. That was. I said, you see? It's just a movie, said Bobby. It, it's it's okay, but, <laughs> but he's grabbing this dude's nuts for no, real. Yeah, oh yeah, boy, yes. no so, thanks. It's a wrap. There was, an, there was an actor in that movie. I don't want to say who it is because I don't. He didn't give me permission, but he told me that he used to be he used to do strong arm robberies. Then he turned into an actor, and uh, they shot at Bob Big Boy on uh, on Riverside, huh? yeah. and he was in there shooting the movie, and he was looking around. And he put his head down. He goes, I think I fucking robbed this place. <laughs> <laughs> and he goes, I wonder if they fucking, if the managers or people here are going to fucking I know remember that. I know who you're talking about. Yeah. And I, I know who you're talking about. And I, we interviewed he him. He said, hey, fucking. He's we, like, yeah, yeah, and he, yeah. All of a sudden, he's and, like, and the manager's I'm, like, can I get you guys anything? Nothing. Nothing. No, 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 no we're good. We're, good. Yeah, we're okay. Me. I'm looking at this guy. And I'm talking to him. And I'm saying, now look at me. Look at me. Do I have a tattoo of a pee on my forehead? And he said, no. I said, because I'm not a pendejo. <laughs> I said, now, motherfucker, you better start. And this guy's breaking out in a sweat. And Michael Mann finally said, okay, cut, cut. Excellent, excellent. excellent. And, he, and he comes up to me and says, man. <laughs> Fucking sweating. <laughs> yeah, great yeah, job. Yeah, great. He says, I haven't been sweating like that, man. That was like the real thing. I haven't been sweated like that in a long time. You know, and, and Pacino comes Gil, that was fucking great. You do great ass. No, this is a fucking living for me, brother. Yeah, that was the real yeah, deal. You did. Yeah, you, yeah, yeah. This ain't this ain't acting. This was the real deal. So I, I remember when you said, "I know who you got to be talking okay. about now." Wow, you never got shot at, did you? As a cop, oh. or, yeah, I got. Yeah, you did. As a cop, by bad guys and by another cop. By his own, and he just fucking he happened to just miss him. Yeah, he's trying to hit him. Uh, it, it was just no controversy. Short version. He thought we were bad guys. We were playing clothes. He thought we were bad guys, and we had guns out. And so he was telling us. Thankfully, he's a bad shot, huh? Thankfully. Yeah, you know, he was yeah. saying, drop your guns. I'm saying, is he talking to us? <laughs> and, he said, <laughs> he fucking... and his partner, who knew who we were, said, it's okay. They're cops. He says, I don't know who they are. Drop your guns. And he yells back. He says, hey, they're sheriffs. He says, I don't know who they are. Drop your guns. Boom. And he fired. Holy shit. And I said, holy shit. I said, a lot more than holy shit. Did you shoot back? No, I'm I jumped, shooting right back. Like, like an elephant. That's why I can't be a cop. I'm, yeah, I'm like, yeah, blah, 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 I'm shooting until I, I get you. <laughs> I had already thrown my gun on the ground, but like an elephant, I jumped over the car, got on the other side. My partner, who was pissed, I had another gun strapped to my leg. And I just said, it's okay, we're back here. If, we pull, if he's going to shoot again, I'll dump him. Yeah. And, and I knew I, I was confident I could dump him. But I didn't have to because his partner started screaming at him, you stupid motherfucker. The gang <laughs> members that were on the street for what? Who, who, like Arsenio Hall. You know, it was uh, it was good stuff, and so he ended up getting fired. So then he became yeah. a, a a sheriff, uniform sheriff, right? Yeah. Patrol, and then he got uh, he got asked by another uh, high profile detective, uh, uh, Frank Salerno, who caught the Hillside Strangler. Yeah, yeah. Uh, Bianchi and Bono, and then uh, he said, hey, "You want to be my partner?" Yeah, I had been transferred up to homicide because my specialty was gangs, and after doing that for a couple of years, then Salerno approached me because I was in homicide mm. and asked me if I wanted to be his partner. Wow. And I was like, fuck yes, you know, that's 
creme de la creme. Right, it's top tier. So the Night Stalker documentary that's on Netflix. Yeah, it's out right now. It's It's it's, on now. That a year ago, probably came out a year ago. January 14th. And uh, that's where I saw it. Like, you know, my publicist like, have you seen the Night Stalker? I've already seen it three times in that same day. (laughs) Right. (laughs) You know, and uh, Gil was there with with, uh, Frank, and then Gil was the first person to say, this is the same guy. And everybody else said, no, no, it's two guys. And he goes, no, fuck that, it's the same guy. You know. And and they, when he left the room, they'd go, that guy's fucking full of shit, man. It's not one guy doing this bullshit, it's two guys. Why did they think it was just two, it was just two, they thought there's no way one dude could have done all that. Everything done, when you investigate anything, anything you do, even in comedy, everything's predicated on criminal history with this work, with it won't work. Well, nobody in criminal history had been documented doing what I was alleging he was doing. Huh. You know, pedophiles stick to stick to kids. Yeah, either girls or boys. This guy was doing both. He was in his manners of killing. It was guns, knives, shod foot, strangling, manual ligature strangulation. He just crossed all the lines. But there were certain things that were there that I could see was one man, and the other guys were saying, "You're full of shit. You're a punk trying to make a name for yourself." We talked about this before. It's funny that the dude Angelo that I play golf with goes, "Yeah, I'm gonna go back on the podcast where you guys aren't talking about death or what else did he say?" <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's so, it's, but it's so, interesting. So I used to work at Northridge in the in the mid '80s when he was on his fucking tear, mm. and the thing was, you know, there's no internet on this shit, you radio and TV, but you knew he was out there, and he would hit in Northridge, and then when you got out of work, everybody just got the fuck back to their house but there was like a fucking feeling in the valley of this dude and a fear that he's everywhere and he would fucking deliver i'd be like this dude is out there you think he'd be like no you know they're fucking on me he would fucking hit that's so creepy and people expected him to hit and he would hit what was his number what did the number end up being he ended up killing 14 people here that we're aware of we dropped one in the interest of justice he says he was good for four more that we weren't aware of we looked at actually eight more, Damn. but there wasn't enough physical evidence to go ahead and link them. So if we didn't have enough where we knew we'd get a conviction, we didn't, we wouldn't mess with it. Because we didn't probably want probably more, huh? Yeah, we didn't want somebody to say, we didn't want to lose a couple of cases and sway the jurors, hey, maybe if they were wrong on these, maybe they'd be wrong over here. Mm-hmm. So unless it was a solid case, we didn't take it. He told me that after in custody about seven years, he'd be willing to talk openly about the other ones that we weren't aware of. And then he got pissed off and he didn't want to talk to me anymore. What, what, why, he just? Because he, he got married when he was in custody. And so the, <laughs> the news media. How does that happen? This that bitch you, loves this yeah. dude. They, and they get a lot, of, right, that dude got a lot of, a lot of women. Uh, and they, they always do. Yeah. They but always do. But like legit women. He had some good looking women following him. One day in court. It's like Bundy, same thing, right? It's yeah. like women were Tell me about the, 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 the ladies that worked uh, there. The the ladies in court one day. We had a lot of visitors come in court. They just want to see what was going on. Uh. And two ladies dressed to the tens. They were attorneys, no doubt. Little briefcases. They come in. They sit down there. And they're gorgeous, both of them. Very businesslike. Richard would walk into the courtroom, and every time he walked in, he'd scan the ladies, see who we wanted to look at on the way out, take his time. And so now it's time. I get a phone call. They call me up to the bailiff. I go up and talking on the phone. And I'm looking, <laughs> and it's time for Richard to walk out. Now he goes back, and he locks eyes with... The two broads that had walked in, mm. two ladies had walked in, one of them sitting right on a corner, and he looks and smiles at her. She looks at him, blows him a kiss, and opens <laughs> up her legs. Get the fuck out of here. No. That's crazy. And I just couldn't believe it. I told, I went back, I told my partner, I said, Man. fuck it, arrest me. It didn't work for me. <laughs> you know, it was just incredible. He, he did have a What does this say about beautiful following. women? And, and, and he married crazy. Like bad guys. They're crazy. They're oh, like bad guys. And They're he married crazy. an ugly one, too. Did he? Yeah, she was ugly, and, and and he got pissed off because the news media came to me and you know what do you think about this? And I said it was I thought it was a mockery of the criminal justice system. He wasn't in for, in there for rehab; he was in there for sentence of death. Yeah. And why uh, do we have to do anything? And it was a mockery of the sacrament of marriage because his marriage would never be consummated. Right. You know, so it it just made it all. Worthless and so. But do they have rights like that in prison, where you where you I can get you married did. and you can have visitors? Uh, well, you, you can have visitors. Yeah. Doesn't it depend on your level visits. of crime, right? You can't have conjugal visits on, on death row. But it depends on your level, right? Doesn't it? You have to get approved by the judge to get a conjugal visit, right? It's not standard, is it? You you can't. My understanding, I I won't say for sure. My understanding, inmates on death row cannot have conjugal visits. Right. 
other inmates can have. But if they fuck them in the shower, it if, catches. If, that's, that's, that's like not, part of the. That's right. part of. That's part of the. Extra. <laughs> that's conjugal surprise, is what that is. That's soap surprise. That's soapy surprise. Yeah, and 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 Richard, uh, the way they visited over there, you know, it's kind of out in the open. Everybody came out to visit in the same spot, and the other inmates. I was told that they hated him. They all wanted him dead because when, if he was out there on a visit, and somebody else came by to visit, they had their wives or anybody else, he would. Take his whack route, start playing with himself, expose himself to the mm. other visitors. Yeah, sounds they right. They hated him. They wanted to kill him. Wow. Damn. It's not like something. There's no rules, right? No, I'm his uh, prison. Yeah. You know what I mean, mean, what are you going to do to the guy? I'm not here to make friends. What do they say right. that uh, that? I'm here to uh, jerk off on my friends. <laughs> yeah, the 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 wolf. Uh, <laughs> wait, wait a minute. Hang on. Hey, wait a minute. <laughs> uh, that that uh, Lyle, Lyle and uh, um, Eric Eric uh, Menendez Menendez were at uh, were they were they state and county jail? No. Yeah, they were in county jail or, before or, they got convicted. Uh, and that they were talking to, to their lawyers and Richard Ramirez walked by and they both were like... <sighs> Wait, those are the kids that killed their parents. Their parents. Yeah. Yeah. And There's, they both went like... Sean Penn. Fucking Richard Ramirez. Sean Penn was in the in the jail right across the hallway from Richard. Oh, when he was... Yeah. Wow. Wow. I don't know what Sean Penn... I think was, was a drinking and driving like abuse and stuff. Yeah, it wasn't long. It wasn't in there for long. It was just in there for a few days but they were right right along and so Richard wanted to contact him Sean my understanding didn't want to have anything to do with Menendez, Richard I, I drove by that house when I first moved to LA you know in Beverly yeah it's, it's on a major was your wife with you she said let's go drive by the yeah, Menendez yeah, it's, it's on like Canada or something it's on a major road in Beverly Hills I don't remember where, but you can still drive by the house but it's, the house is still there and I was thinking about that like uh, we were talking to this on uh, my podcast about nah. living in your house being haunted. Right. I've never been in a house where they had uh, murder like that. It's crazy. Uh, and do they have yeah. to tell you or not? I think there's no, it's they, something no, like they, 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 I, the I, next resident they have to tell, but after that, I don't think they do. Home ownership is different than an apartment rentals. They have to tell you stuff. Like, yeah, that's they, awesome. they have to do it with homes. Home. They have to do it with homes here too, yeah. Well, if somebody died in the house, they have to tell you? Yeah. But from way back? Some amount. I showed you all the stuff on my phone, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. My, my landlord, my first landlord in West Hollywood, this old little Italian lady. It was West Hollywood. I was living in West Hollywood, and she's the, one of the first things. She's like, uh, are you gay? And I was like, <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not gay. And she's like, oh, thank God. And I was like, you're, you're, you know there's West Hollywood? Everybody's gay. <laughs> yeah. I was like, you're in the wrong business if, you, if this is where you have your building. And she said, the, the, the man who was in this here, he died before he, you come here. I was like, oh, shit. Oh, that's terrible. She goes, of AIDS, but, you know, he was gay. And I was like, oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> the way she threw it away. <laughs> yeah, man. I was like, this homophobic <laughs> landlord in the middle of West Hollywood. Shit, I was like, what are you doing that. in this neighborhood, lady? Everybody in there. Yeah, yeah I was like, you're in the wrong oh. spot. Sell the building if you don't like gay <laughs> I, people. I tell you what, after listening to the podcast, and, and I've heard his stories, and I've been in his house. Yeah. But after listening to that, all man, it starts sinking in, man. I could never... I don't care how drunk I got. I could never spend the night in this house. Yeah. I, hey, George, just let me sleep outside the front door. Let me tell you. I'll uh, be on the porch. We, we cleared them pretty much all out. And the lady said that there was a couple of evil, like the poltergeist are the ones that, like you told me not to call anybody. Like, <laughs> I would call people and they would they would hear noise and stuff. She, she said, mm. don't call anybody anymore. But the knocking. The oh, loud. so loud. In the so fucking loud. closet. And in I the live bedroom. by myself. I but mean, you, st- you think now it's gone? You think it's over? I, it's pretty much gone. But... A couple of nights, you know, because the floor's old, you know, but I'm a light sleeper, so I'll be sleeping, and then you'll hear like, like, like mm. a step, one step, mm. and you're like, fuck. So whoever, <laughs> whatever spirit that is, you can't see, but has enough respect for me to only take yeah, one, one step. step. Yeah. It's not going. <laughs> <laughs> but, a, but it's a trip, man. It's a trip to live in that house. You ever think, do you ever think they're fucking with you? Like when they do one step, do you ever think like a, a, a spirit knows that one step is uh, more I mean, scarier? If you're than, a spirit, wouldn't you be? That's what I mean. I'd be shit. fucking with people so much if I was a spirit. I wouldn't run through the house. The, I, would, I would pull on one thing every like few days. Just the to get one it in that your head. the one that really got me was when when my daughter Mayan said, "You know, there's a Poltergeist app on TikTok," and I said, "There is." And then I did it in the room, and something showed up in front of the screen. No, wasn't me. And then it disappeared. I'm like, holy no, shit. I'm out. Oh, like, what the fuck is Selling. that? There's no way I could do both. I couldn't hold it like this and then run my own hand over it. Like, no. And I was like. It took me years to get over the fucking Yorona. Oh. And now you're going to lay this shit on me? Yeah, 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 Forget yeah, yeah. about it. No, you got to go to his man. house. Go to his house and go check it out. No. And, and he's got a painting. He's got a, you, you, some demonic painting on your wall. I said, get rid of that fucking thing. That's what's bringing them all in. Talk shit about my fucking house. <laughs> <laughs> talk shit about my art. <laughs> Which one was that one? 
The one that's uh, not the one that's the car. The cops shoot. I said that looks like an officer involved shooting right yeah, there. Yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. the it's one on the Carlos other Carlos Almaraz on the north. Oh, that's all, that's Carlos Almaraz, man. That's that's like the the Chicano painter. What is it an image of? Um, the fucking devil. You know what? Yeah, <laughs> that, dude, that guy was a Chicano guy, East LA. Big uh, Cheech was the guy who turned me on to him, you know, because Cheech was an art collector, <laughs> and and he, I think he knew Almaraz, uh, Carlos Almaraz, and uh, listen, when you're married and you have a show on TV, uh-huh. uh, money is no object. <laughs> yeah. So Anne got me a smaller painting, and I got the big one that's hanging there. I got the divorce. And I said, how much was that? She goes, you don't want to know. Yeah. Oh. I said, I don't want to know right now, bitch, but when we get divorced, <laughs> yeah, I want to know. Yeah. know. And there was a, I, I go, what's that? It was it was a, a French, like a, she goes, that hung in a chateau in the 1500s in Paris. And I said, you know what? I'm going to tell you before I even ask you, I don't want to know how much that cost. Yeah, no. <laughs> they no. shipped it over. It was in a chateau oh. in the 1500s. Is it, is it any of these? I just looked up yeah. some of his. It is. As a matter of fact, um, as a matter of fact, that painting was probably, it's not in there, Okay. $250,000 then, it's probably worth a million now. Jesus Christ. And uh, it was his favorite painting, and Anne uh. asked his widow what, what she would possibly sell, and I believe uh, she sold that painting. But Damn. George didn't know until it was up on the wall. <laughs> this is this is how much money Ann spent. You know, God bless her. <laughs> the motherfucking the guys that worked on my house were from England. They listened to books on tape. You wanna know when a motherfucker's expensive? The guys I would hire listen to Mexican music. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> they're, little listening, box, yeah. they're listening to books on tape. With AirPods in and shit. Yeah. They're, doing, they're doing Venetian plaster. <laughs> like, Rewind that. I missed that part. Hey, fucking fucking books on tape. What's the most expensive thing that you've bought or that's been bought by you unknowingly? Is it art like that? A quarter of a million is heavy for art. Uh, um, uh, uh, when we met, I wasn't, you know, I was a young comedian struggling. I remember there was a store called Adres on Wilshire, and I bought a, di- a sapphire and two small settings as the engagement ring, and... Oh, 93, and 12 years later, a guy came with a suitcase with a security guard, and she bought a diamond that was maybe $400,000. Holy shit. (laughs) (laughs) She bought a condo to wear around. That's the wildest shit. And we got divorced. She said, fuck him. And she took it out and used it now to have helicopters land from Vietnam to, <laughs> to, <laughs> to refuel <laughs> from the smoke. <laughs> if I can get the elephants to run yeah. down the street. Yeah. <laughs> Cover both sides. And, and, uh, and, you know, it's one of those where it's 400 at one time, but she goes, okay, Mr. Porsche, Mr. Lakeside, Mr. Pebble B. Oh, okay. All right. All right. We're keeping a tally now. Yeah, but those are active things. A, a stone that sit sits is so wild to me. I only, I only, I, I always understand indulging with money on things that you really, really get to use. I never, I never criticize because I'm always like, if you're going to use it, it's expensive, it's fun. But man, a stone is so wild to me. I saw a girl last night at the Laker game that walked onto the floor. You know, it was like four, four rappers, you know. Yeah. Uh, and these dudes, I mean, the amount of chains yep. and shit. But the one girl that was trailing all these dudes. I, in my life, I've never seen. I mean, it, it was. I mean, no shit was a oh, silver wow. dollar. The si- the diamond was a silver dollar. That's how big it was, on her hand. And I was like, God damn, it had to been a, a million or two right. in in a, in a stone. And what, but it's never go. It's you can't do anything. Yeah. You can't sell it. You're not giving your money back. You can get robbed. Is all you can get. Yeah. Is <laughs> See, I don't even think like that. I can't. You're talking big ass old diamonds. It was you're huge. talking million dollar pain. So, so I can't even afford to go to the fucking Laker games. When you're, when, <laughs> yeah. you Get him to the Laker game, did man. Did you wear watches and stuff growing up? Do you have a chain? Did no, you, you know what's stuff? you know what's funny. Well, yeah, I had a chain when I was young, and then uh, then when I got older, I, I just I never wore jewelry, and my dad never wore a lot of jewelry either. He, like ever, because it comes ever. from a thing where. You know, like you see somebody like your dad didn't do it, maybe your brother didn't do it, somebody didn't do it. Mm. Then you grow up and you're like, no, nah, our family didn't wear a lot of... We never wore jewelry. Like, I have watches. I have a few nice watches, mm. and I never wear them. And it's so silly. I don't, I don't even know why. I used to love the idea of them, but I'd wear them to like a nice dinner with my lady on a yeah. date. And then I sometimes would wear them to shows, but I would feel guilty. You know, because it was a nice watch. Right. So I'd feel like, man, if someone else sees me, I'm on my come up in comedy. 
they're going to hate me right. if they see me with a nice watch. Because right. you know, that comedy is yep. this weird. Once you get to a level, no one cares anymore. Mm. But when you're first getting up and you get they a couple think, bucks, yeah, and I bought a watch for my first sitcom money, because I was proud. I was like, man, I want one thing nice. I was living in a shitty little apartment. I had a bullshit car. What year was that? Uh, 2009 or 10. Okay. And what I was, show was it? It was called Mixology on ABC. It was a one-season right. show. But it was my first sitcom, was and I got my first check, and I was like, man, I want a watch. I want, like, one nice watch. And I bought it, and I was so scared to wear it to the store. But when I would go on the road, I could wear it. When I left L.A., I would wear it because I was like, nobody can judge me. I'm gone. I'm not in L.A. But when I would go to the club or the improv or the store, I was just scared of bullshit. I didn't want someone to be like, yeah, oh, sure. look at this one. You know, I, because the competition is so thick in comedy. People hate, people love to see you on the come up, but they hate to see it happening. You know, they're proud of you, but they don't want to watch you do it. They don't want to know you have a little bit of money. Right. What happened? Oh, did it uh, fall yeah. off? The, the, yeah, I that's probably, right. They, I probably messed somehow, with it. somehow they would. They don't want to see you. They want that. Like every comic, I think this is in most industries. I mean, most peers, you want your friends to rise in whatever ranks it is, but there's a degree of their rise where they're like, mm, "Fuck that guy." Yeah. Everyone does that. Mm -hmm. It's just it's uh, it's hard to get away from. I don't know for some reason. They want to pull you down. Yes, yeah, so the crabs in a bucket. Yeah, exactly. To, uh, yeah, crabs I mean, at in some a point, bucket. Well, and then so we do that in society top, too. Down. The moment yeah, you see society. someone get too too famous in society, we want to shoot them out of the sky. You love to boost them up, and then when they get too big, they you want to shoot them down, and you're a stranger. Think when your friends do it, it's weird. When someone you know kind of hates on you because you've got something. Right. That's yeah. what's wild. That that shit. So yeah, I, you know, I, I put you know stuff why? away. Because, because I'll say this: because, um, you know, I didn't. We don't have any more advantages than anybody else. Mm -mm. Like you're, it's just your work. Like you know, I was, I was, uh, I started in '79. Arsenio was in '89. I started doing Arsenios, and then he stopped in '95. So '95 and '99 were, were my darkest years. Of them. I was drinking. And I, I was going nowhere. And I remember thinking, man, I became the last fucking thing I wanted to be, which is a road comedian. And I just, one New Year's Eve, I decided, you know, I'm just going to start worrying less about fucking everybody else and only worry about myself. I used to worry about, I used to read People, the fucking oh, Enquirer, yeah. and my wife would buy it. I was worrying about everybody else, man. I was like, this, is, this can't be fucking healthy. So one, 98, 99, I'm like, you know what? And it was and it was almost like drugs, getting off drugs because you'd be like, "What's that?" So uh, people might, "Oh no, no, I'm okay." I'm, no, no, I don't want to. Look at <laughs> you want to look at no, no. quit. It's a lot. You're like, is that, I, "Is that the trade?" And I decided to fucking worry less about what's going on and worry more about what's going on with me. And it fucking that works. Fucking change, man. Yeah, you can't worry about somebody else. You fucking shit. bragging on somebody. It's fucking negative shit. You're like, you know how you know that guy. Fuck him. But think about how bad social media is now for That's people bad. on the ride. I was just awful. gonna ask if you found it. Get, like, is it harder now? No. Because oh, right. Because he's out. <laughs> he is already at a point where that. Do you know what I mean? That that's yeah. the wave that below. Level, but the youngest saying, guys yeah. in comedy that they have to deal with it constantly. And then you have to wild. deal with some motherfuckers on TikTok that aren't bad in 15 seconds. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like they can't yeah. do anything beyond that. But like that little dude that came in here, that does, not that little dude, but the dude that does me, Leon Go That motherfucker's yeah. got a whole fucking house yes. in the hills. Wait, and who is it? Who is it? The, this guy, Leo, Leo Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Yeah. He, he wow. Well, I mean, he made his he made his thing doing me. He does like impressions of like what I know, George would do. I'm not him in here, but yeah. you should be able to tax that. I should, be able to I should have tax, tax an, that. Shit. It was an NFT. You could and get he, it. And he does. He, he, and he, he does good. It's good. His, his, like some of George it, is not, not, not you. Not, <laughs> not of you. That's good. That's good. That's good. Not not of you. But uh, of, have you seen it? No. Of the uh, other characters. Have to see. Of the other characters he plays. when he's a teacher, when he's this, when he. You know, but he made his his he, he made a hit doing you. He's still yeah. he's fucking still doing yeah. it. Yeah. TikTok, TikTok is the thing that's gonna. I it's mean, that's the, the thing, next man. generation's thing. They break sure. they break music. So wait, we say his name again. This kid, Leo, Leo Gonzalez. Gonzalez. Leo Gonzalez. He does me trying to find my car. Let's see. He's like, this is George Lopez trying to find his car. He, he, There's a part of it that's flattering, though, right? Isn't it? It's nice, right? It's nice that someone's doing. Uh, it's, it's, there's a part of it that's flattering. I can, I can tell right now he's pissed off. He didn't like it. There's a part of it that's flattering. I, it's got to be. But then I know I'm sure there's a part of it that you're like, fuck oh. you, fuck you, a little bit, <laughs> a little bit. Yeah, let's see. Oh, I've seen this kid. After I deliver yeah. a joke. Yeah, but it, uh, yeah, 
I seen this dude. <laughs> I think he's fucking right. <laughs> he's right. <laughs> you just did it just now. Yeah, just there. You, I did, I you, did, did, you did one together because he was on the podcast, like he said. They did one together after. Oh, we do one together here. Where he's like thing. doing it, uh, where Leah's doing and it. Like, and like, I don't do it like George that. Comes in, he's like, oh, yeah. How old <laughs> is this kid? My impersonation of George Lopez looking at a menu. This motherfucker. <laughs> 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 and he's living a pretty good life. You know what? Uh, uh, there's a there's an actress that used to follow me, and uh, we went out a couple of times, and she doesn't follow me anymore, but she follows him. It's like, hey, fuck you. <laughs> <laughs> I want the fucking imitator. Like, I don't want real crap. I'll take that fucking shit. Like, that I'm smells. the original. I'm the I original. Want, I don't want lobster. I'll take some. Yeah, give me like imitation. Lobster you get at Ikea. Imitation crap. Yeah, imitation crap. Straight out of Black crap. Mirror. It's like, they don't follow you. They follow the person who's famous. People. Hey, man, it's That's a little bit of a trip. It, it's a trip because as I move closer to the end and you see the guys coming up in the beginning, it's a whole different. Oh, yeah. Does it, does it bother Let me ask you, Does it bother you personally? You've paid your dues. Both to of to have a guy make fun of me? To no. have a guy. To have. No, not make fun of you, but all these young guys on TikTok, they're getting all this fame and they're getting no. money out of it, you know, Doesn't without paying their dues. No, no, it's right. it. nah, you know what, man? Anybody who's ever stepped on a stage has paid. If you take one step hmm. and you go up there and you talk for five minutes, like, get the fuck out. You pay dues right there. Because yeah. that's an experience you will never forget. And then you'll be like, hey, tell me about that time you did comedy. Oh, we're at this bar in Chicago. I went up there trying to, I thought I was going to be funny. They fucking threw shit at me. <laughs> and it's traumatic for the rest of your life. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. Thing. It's but this hard, guy, man. They're, 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 they're ha it has to exist. I mean, like, this is his, that has to exist as much as the veteran that puts in 20 years and then pops has to exist. It's That's the balance. Because these two things serve as totally different things. Yeah. Did you, you see uh, <clears throat> that show Dave? Yeah, that was, yeah. A, that was a show I did, yeah. Okay, it's still going on? Yeah, we're going to do another season in June. We'll do our third season you in know, June. You, the, okay. here, here's the thing, because, because people become yeah, like June. creatures of their shows. Like if you watch like maybe Succession, mm -hmm. and maybe you might not even yeah. see Dave or, or, or uh, think you might like it. I watched it. I bought the first season. I won the second season. I think it's great, man. I mean, Thanks, it's so man. funny, man. As your career, are you gay or not gay? <laughs> That's funny that you say that. I joked about it because I said, I said, you, are you not going to let me get a girl this whole show? And he's like, we're going to work on something for the third season. I said, because because I it, it could because who knows? Yeah, because you guys are friends, but, but but there's a little bit of like when guys are friends, yeah. there's something like in the bathtub. Well, he's gay. Yeah, 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 yeah. It is so funny. They throw he throws a lot of that shit in there. I think he does that just to fuck with people. I think he thinks that's funny to yeah. fuck with people on that. But for me, I said in the third season, I said I better get something. You better <laughs> throw me something. But and you can be anything, vague. It's too vague, man. And your character, like, uh, uh, it's funny when they show you as a kid. Oh yeah, yeah. They yeah. give you some of the, they show him as a kid and they give him some of the traits that he had which I think is fucking yeah, brilliant too like, yeah, like you see the little kid job. with no beard nothing <laughs> the little reddish little hair kid, and yeah. he's talking as a kid <laughs> in the lunchroom and you're like oh shit that's him because is, he has the same cadence yeah. I like when they do I mean they, they're gonna I hope the third season explores uh, deep, the characters man. bigger and bigger and bigger because yeah, yeah. you know like at some point these shows that are about the business because it's about the rap world and the entertainment world <clears throat> like Entourage. At some point, you don't give a shit about the business on the show. You want to see more about the people on the show, which I hope we get more into because the business side of the, t the show, uh, people don't really give a fuck about. I think like Entourage was funniest, or those shows are the funniest when the characters yeah. have a funny character story mm -hmm. built out. That doesn't have to do with Hollywood as much. It's more about that outside world. So if well, we get into that, I'll be. What, what, what was uh, yeah. brilliant, I thought, is that you know he's a rapper, he's a Jewish rapper. And uh, they give him the name, and then he's like, his girl's like, rap, I never heard you rap. He's like, nah, you know, he doesn't want to do it. Yeah, he's embarrassed. They feel comfortable doing it. And then he goes in the studio, and they, you know, they're fucking clowning him, and then he does it. He lights he's it up. fucking brilliant, man. That was, yeah, that was when we did the first, Shit, that, that was uh, YG and, um, yeah. I can't remember the other dude, but YG and a bunch of dudes, you know, look, no disrespect to them, they're the shit. But they 
they brought a whole crew and some of the dudes on the crew brought real guns to the show <laughs> and they were like we can't have that inside the studio <laughs> yeah. dude hot set and they weren't uh, they weren't coming onto the set i think they were just people that wanted to come kick it with him that were like when they, they did the studio shoot they, they, they oh my god oh, but they, it's so funny to think that you're like yeah man if you want the real deal you're gonna get the real deal the real deal you know mm -hmm. what i mean there's no facade with a lot of these guys that's that is that's, what that's it is life, yeah. and we shot a lot of time i mean we shot a uh, a ton of that show in South LA. So if we ever did anything with guys that were affiliated, it was real. I mean, it was like, there was no, there are this weird line of Hollywood, the people that work in Hollywood that are affiliated. Do you know what I mean? Like Eddie, Snoop Eddie. is affiliated, but he works in Hollywood. Yeah. And it's this weird balance, but he knows guys that will still come the, real. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. There's that they weird come, line, man. So when I was doing uh, the talk show, like 2009, 10, Audrey Plaza and I on a Saturday, there was a, there was a like a hood tour, almost like a TMZ tour of Hollywood, mm -hmm. but it was hood. It was gang. Mm -hmm. It was a gang affiliated tour of South Central. So they presented it to me. I said, "Let's do it." And the <laughs> guy came on Saturday. We got in there. A Audrey, Aubrey, and I, and then I had a little white girl assistant, and we we're in there. And the guy saying, "You know, up here where Snoop did this, the kid like the Ice Cube over here," and that's like, but it's all about. And we go to the jungle. Mm -hmm. Where they shot in that cul-de-sac, where Denzel Washington's, ah, you mm -hmm. motherfucker! Yeah, yeah, yeah. So King uh, Kong, and King Kong, Kong got shit. shit on training so, day. So, yeah. Aubrey, oh, so Aubrey that did that scene in the cul-de-sac. George, come back! Cause I left, and she's like, "You motherfucker! I will have you!" Like going off in the street, and we get out, and they had to ask those dudes if we could be on the street. Correct. And yeah. they knew me. They have respect. I have respect for them. And then a little white girl goes, as we're ad lib, can George get a chew up in this bitch? And these dudes went, fuck George. And like, I was like, we're, we're just messing around. But when he said fuck George, yeah, yeah. that was a, that was <laughs> that was real. Oh was yeah, fuck George. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I'd have been like, let's go, we gotta go, we gotta go, we have and to they start had some the car. over there like, what happened right there? Oh, this dude got capped. Uh, like, what's the day? Sunday. Uh, Saturday is Friday. Yeah, oh. no. Now you're like, shit. Now you have to check in when you, you know, know that. You know that. You know that. Don't fuck around, man. That's, that's, that's when Be is. Real was sitting right there, and Be Real came in here, and Be Real's from here, and I always thought LAPD was the people you had to look out for, and he's like, oh hell no, man. Sheriffs would come and fucking roust you. You lie to a sheriff, you fucking beat your ass, man. Really? Like, you don't lie to a oh, sheriff. He goes, you lie to the LAPD, but you don't lie to a sheriff. And uh, <laughs> they had little respect for the sheriffs. <laughs> and he sat right there. I was like, "No yeah. shit!" I, like I didn't know. I was like, "What the fuck?" You guys don't like that. you guys don't like each other. The sheriff and the LAPD don't talk. They don't. Oh no, no, that's that's friendly rivalry. That, that's all it is. Okay. Uh, up on the top level, before we have what's going on up, but at the, up at the top level, there was always, you know, bumping heads. Yeah. When we did the Night Stalker case, first thing we did with our counterparts from LAPD, we said. Listen, we just sat down in a room and said, okay, we don't give a fuck what they say up on top. We keep nothing from each other. We work the case. We share information. We right. do it. And it was the best operation we ever had. Okay, so check this out. So when Richard Ramirez was out there, mm. these dudes like were in jeopardy because you know you don't know if that motherfucker's going to come and try to take you yeah. know try to take somebody in your family. Yeah, he knows where you live. Mm -hmm. So his so Gil's family left. Like they're, he's like, hey, you guys got to get out of here while this shit is going on because it's not safe here. So Gil's at his house in the middle of the night, and he hears a noise, and he gets up, and he gets his gun. He's got his, he's got his gun, and he's, he's got his back against the wall, because that's how they do it. And in the middle of the night, his phone rings. And I said, how fucking high did you jump? Is that scared the Damn. fuck Scoot out of me, man? 3.30 in the morning, I'll never forget it. Imagine, man, like you you hear something, and you're like this, and you're looking around, and the phone rings. I'm just going to start shooting at the phone. Mm -hmm. It was <laughs> blah, 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 blah. Uh, Channel 5, John Wayne. There was a movie he used to be a hero. Who was that? Who, who called you? Who do you think it that was? was? It was it was the office calling me, telling me to call Linda Arthur, my good friend, who was on the documentary. Yeah. She was a deputy. She lived right across the street from Sophie Dickman who was one of our victims. Mm -hmm. She was on July the 7th, and she had been raped, she had been burglarized, she had been robbed. Then she drug, She was handcuffed to the bed, drug her bed to the window and started yelling, Mrs. Arthur, Mrs. Arthur, because my wow. friend, Linda Arthur, who was a deputy, lived right across the street from her. Linda's husband had just been murdered June 1st, and this is July 7th, she called and she was working our crime lab at the time. She'd been out on some of the murder scenes with me. She was my friend. I'd gone through the academy with her husband. 
they call me up and they said, call Linda Arthur at home. Here's her number. Yeah. And she called. Is this up. all in your neighborhood? No, this was, I was living at that time in Roland Heights. This was in Monterey Park. And they just said, she says, Gil, I think you ought to come down here. Lady Cross Street just got robbed and raped, and I think it's part Jesus. of what you're working on. I mean, this, this motherfucker worked alone, yeah, and uh, he was... It was mostly you know, in the, I was it up, mostly in the valley? No, it was all over LA It was everywhere. County, everywhere. Mm -hmm. what, when I woke up, but exactly, you know, because uh, homicide cops, nurses, first thing they do, something happens. What time is it? Yeah. Because you always want to document anything. When it jumped, I looked, 3.30 in the morning. I get back in bed, and I'm saying... What the fuck is he doing right now? This is fucking with me. You know, it's really, I can't call the cops because if I clear her, nobody's here, they're going to think I'm nuts. Right. You know, but subconsciously, <laughs> I just right. thought somebody was in my house. So I cleared my house, get back in bed. And now, you know, I got to call up over there. And so I got to go check it out. But I'm sitting there, what the fuck is going on? Sophie Dickman will say at 3.30 in the morning, he started sodomizing her. She looked at the clock because oh. she was a nurse. She says, oh. 3.30 in the morning. And he was Jesus right there in the hood. Christ. Man. Yeah, so it was... Right by him. It was, uh, it was kind of tough. It was such a crazy, huh? That's nuts, man. Just to think about it. Is it be, and also, your mind's going to play some tricks on you, too. And like, it's not going to help because you're overthinking oh, it anyway. Yeah. Oh, you that's know? all I was. If you're looking for it, it's going to be there type of thing. When the documentary finally dropped, I apologized to my wife because uh, the job was, as I thought, your job is the house and the kids. My job is to find this killer. Mm -hmm. And so I paid no attention to her and the kids. And after watching the documentary, I apologized to her because I said I'd never thought of, and I hadn't factored in, the fear factor. I wasn't there to protect you. She was there all by herself. She was crying. You know, it was a tough time. So I asked her forgiveness, you know, and she was kind enough to say, okay, it's all yeah, right. She gave it to you. Yeah. That's that's wild, man. I still tell her we got the wrong guy. Once once a year, I tell her we got the wrong guy. Have her move out again. <laughs> <laughs> and that was over there at that Cecil Hotel downtown. Oh yeah, that crazy ass hotel that they're trying to stay on. They changed the name. Stay on Main. Yeah. Oh yeah, this is where the girl. It was still in the says water Cecil back. on the side. On yeah, the side. They, they remodeled yeah. it. They've, they've done a bunch of. Re it's a beautiful hotel inside, yeah. but but. It's I'm gonna take my wife there next week. Danky, you are? <laughs> yeah, they, give, they got danky, good rates bro. right now, man. It's, it's danky, man. Like you go in the room, and they're, I mean, it's ominous driving by it. You can never scratch that off. That label's no. gonna be there. Yeah. No matter how what you do to it. Even the People Alexandria can... over there down down there too, because Purple Rain they shot in Minneapolis, but they shot some of it on in downtown LA. Is that uh, right? Alexandria. Yeah. That's where yeah. you, you and Momo said you, there's some noises down there. Momo was talking about the Alexandria Mo one. Yeah, Momo Momo's got. Uh, um, paranormal stuff. So you uh, get into that so deep. I, I like. I, it, I, you I know believe what? I, it. I actually asked um, AJ Barrero, who's a, who's. A, uh, let me see what he said. Okay. Um, you gonna have AJ? AJ gonna come uh, down? Oh, just a single text that says definitely haunted. Definitely haunted. Yeah, he'll, he'll come in here and say this place was haunted. <laughs> This place? That's what he'll say. Okay, yeah. so <laughs> I, fo like I found this picture it. of uh, Bob Saget and, and me and Whoopi and John Oliver. I saw that. You yeah. posted it. And yeah, uh, let me show you, man. That's sad. Yeah. Let me show you what. you a legend. That was oh, shocking. Man. I um, didn't know who John Oliver was, though. You know who he is? Oh, he's a guy that doesn't today. do his fucking today. time. Oh, he's great. Uh, look you know at who this. he is now, though? Look at this. No, I just no. saw it this morning. Oh, uh, last wow. week tonight on HBO. Look at the light. This is like, uh, yeah, it's wild. I mean, it's a weekly, nightly sort of show, kind of daily show. See how the light is. Like, yeah. Half and inside. Where is that at? In New York. Is it Carolina? Look at this. Yeah. Look at the exposure of this picture. Oh, it's wow. half in light and half in. Oh, dude. You know what's really tragic about the, about the Bob That's thing? Cool. Other you wanna, than you want to send me that, and I can have it everything. The real tragic thing is. Uh, his post yesterday after oh. doing shows was so beautiful. I mean, yeah, it was as, just a, like, as a guy who yeah. has been doing it since the late seventies, which I met him in seventy nine, to be in twenty twenty two, first show twenty twenty two, and to put those thoughts down. Yeah. As to how he felt to do his first show, he, he was so he was excited. He was like, "Man, I did an hour and a half. I couldn't believe it." Uh, you know, it's like. Yeah. 
It was like he was feeling something, which is wild because you know if he was feeling not well, he wouldn't have said anything. So That's what's right. strange is he must have been feeling great, which is even more strange to me because you wouldn't tweet out how wonderful it felt to do your set again if you were like, man, I'm not feeling right. The set wasn't good. I'm a little uh, off. Do you know what I mean? I don't say anything. I go into disappearance mode when I'm having a, if when it's tough on the road or long gigs or the shows are okay. You don't say shit online. He must have had, he must have been vibing and then... I don't know. Who knows? We'll find out what happens later, but it's a bummer. Uh, it's oh, yeah. shitty, man. Um, and I didn't know the dude. That's why I didn't really kind of say anything about him publicly because I don't know him on a personal level, but you, it was you a bummer. Know, um, well, man, we always... It's funny how we always found, you know, he was always... Because he would be like... What do you see right here? He's like... Uh... uh you know, I want to spoon you like two men. You know, it's yeah, like, yeah, yeah, I mean, bed. that's yeah. Bob, man. It's he like, said, he said, give me, get, let's get back to a bunk bed or something yeah, like that. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, let's go to a bunk bed and we'll, you know, we'll get better. I mean, man. you know, like you, I didn't know the man. I'd seen him and I was yeah. here when he did his podcast. I really felt bad for George. Uh, Cedric was very vocal and, you know, he, he, he put some, some people very, High-profile comedians mm -hmm. and people in the business were saying uh, nice stuff about him. So I was more concerned. My my feelings are certainly with his family, and, yeah. and I didn't know him personally. His daughters. But my feelings were with George, with Cedric, all these other people that really were touched. Because it's closer to you. loss of a friend, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it is wild when you, it's... He became one of those dudes, man, like that would always be... Like, how are you? Like, you know, you good, man? Like, he was worried about I drank too much. And then he's worried that I was alone. Like, he was trying to find somebody for me. And I said, <laughs> and, he, and he was alone. And then he met somebody. <clears throat> and we talked about that, how he didn't think he was going to get married again, and how he, he, he just didn't want to be alone for the rest of his life. And that he met somebody, and they were in love, man. It's like, you know, whatever whatever is in charge of whatever's going on with us, it it could take you at your lowest point, or it can take you when you're in a great point in your life. I know. Absolutely. And you're like, which is better? I don't, honestly, I, mean, I don't. I probably the highest point, maybe. I and, don't want to go when and, I'm low. And then yeah. you know, like, he was more concerned about me last week than I was about myself. Like he was like, "Are you all right?" You know, and yeah. like that's. Pretty fucking amazing, man. Yeah, those those people are, are worth their weight in gold. The ones who like ask you how you're doing, they'll be like, "But no, how are you doing?" Yeah, he's a great one. Yeah, yeah, man. And forever, like he's been around. Like Betty White, you say, "Hey," on the view that I, why is Betty White so important to you? Because she's been around my whole life. Yeah. Like you watch Password in the summer with your friends, and they're fucking laughing and shit. Mm. And Bob too, man. Like I went to the comedy store in 1979, and fucking Bob was one of the first. Dudes, I mean, he was cool. I mean, man, that fucking guy was good back then. He did, then he, got, you know, in the '80s, and he got fucking America's Funniest Home Videos. And then when I came yeah. up, he would see me like, "Hey, it's like, it's like, it's almost like you know, if you're in the, if you're in the like Donnie Brasco, like you're on the fucking bottom, you're chipping fucking parking meters, mm -hmm. and then you do whatever and you make it up and you get made. Like you're, you're with those dudes, man. Like when I met Dennis Miller, like the first time he shook my hand, he goes, "Hey, welcome, welcome aboard." Like he's like, you know, you fucking made it up. Yeah. Like welcome aboard, man. You're one of us. Yeah. And you're like, you're fucking right. I want it. You know, fucking. That's, that's awesome. what happens. Yeah. Yeah. He was on for a, he was on for a long time. I mean, he's been around. He for fucking so long. left funniest home videos. Yeah, like left, and everybody thought he was clean. And then go see him. <laughs> and it was always, it was always oh, yeah. funny for me when I used to go uh, to the oh. Laugh Factory, and people couldn't believe the shit they he would were say. Fucking, you talk about fucking the Olsen twins, oh, and it was the funny. Oh <laughs> yeah. They yeah. couldn't wrap their head around uh, it. They were like, "This isn't the funniest videos guy, uh, is it?" Yeah, they would come to me and they go, "Hey man, you know that dude from the funniest? What's his name? Bob and Sag?" I said, "Yeah." And he's like, "I saw him. That's motherfuckers." I said, "Yes." Yeah, the dirty. I go, "Was he funny?" He goes. In the beginning, no, and then yes. It's like, yeah, yeah but of yeah, course, yeah, like yeah. the shock. Yeah, they can't but, believe but it. He had earned his fucking stripes, man. Like he'd been doing it a long that time. long. And then we talked about he would do my guitar gently weeps like back in the day. And he turned the thing he had a wire to talk about it in the in the podcast. And he would do, oh my and the guitar would water would come out of the guitar. <laughs> and I said, I remember you he goes, I fucking still do it. In that picture that he was in uh, Orlando, the guitars on the on He was the, doing it? On the stool, oh, yeah. He goes, so I still funny. do it. 
Well, and I said, "How did you do that, man?" He goes, "I had like some bladder on my on my stomach, and I had a fucking aquarium tube, and when I turned the knob, I pushed the guitar toward it, pushed the water." Come out of it. <laughs> That's genius. That's great. They but just, they were killers, man. Those guys were killers. They posted a bunch of stuff of him doing stuff at, at Danger Fields back in the day. Yeah, Rodney was uh, Rodney, good. Deal. Yeah, Rodney liked him a lot. I think John it's because he was really fast. I think his style was fast. fast. Right? Yeah, and Rodney then he, liked he fast, would get guys. into that. Uh, that thing where he'd go, and I want to love you, but not like a man loves a woman, like a man loves a man. We get Hawaiian shirts, we'll get some bunk beds, we'll get some KFC, we'll spend the night. Like that, 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 that like he'd, he'd get that shit, and then he would get that shit going. Yeah. And you didn't know what he was gonna say, but it was it was just kind of his cadence, you know. Yeah. Rest in peace to God that dude, him, man. man. Yeah. Those are all like, hey, you know what? You went to Vietnam. We're warriors in another. In that business, where one goes and you feel yeah, it. Yeah, you feel it. It's wild. Even if you don't really, like, I didn't even know him, but it's, yeah. it's just weird to feel it. Because, uh, you know, I don't know. It makes you question a lot of shit because we're doing it. And you, I, every comic on earth thinks about passing away on the road in hotels. Every comic is like, it doesn't matter how good the tour is, how bad the tour is. Doesn't you matter. Th you think about it. You think about being in a hotel. You're in another city. You're out. You're away from home or your family and your friends and your... It and always to call you. Yeah, man. It always passes through your mind that you're oh. like, just another hotel somewhere. You know, uh, <clears throat> Robin Harris <clears throat> in the uh, did do the right thing. Mm -hmm. He played uh, Sweet Dick Willie. Those guys that would sit around in yeah. front of me. But Mike Tyson, my boy's got a head like a pit bull. Like, yeah. like <laughs> Robin Harris was on his way up, like on his way up, and he was uh, he did a uh, 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 house party, played the dad, mm -hmm. and he's hilarious. Or he used to work at the bank. And I worked in Northridge, and I met him somewhere, and he's like, yo, come and see me at El, Tor El Torito, El, Tor El Torito on Wilshire. There was an El Torito by, by 97.1 Catalyst X over there, mm -hmm. and there was an El Torito on Wednesdays. They did comedy, and he worked at the bank, and he went up there and for an hour just ripped into people. And I sat there, man, he's like, Yo, young blood, you want to go up there? I said, "Fuck you, man! I ain't going up there." No. <laughs> and he was—he was brilliant, man. Was yeah. Brilliant. He started doing those movies. And he was in Chicago, and they went to go look on, look, look at him. He had a show, and like Greg Giraldo had passed away in, his, in the hotel room. Another hotel. I you stay. I used to stay in that hotel. When you go do Stress Factory, you stay in that same hotel. I thought about that all the time. Oh, That's yeah. those dismal things that you're like, man, man. The road is so weird. You know what, man? Because we all touch each other in a weird way. You all have touched a, a comic, and even if you've never met, you know, you know them somehow. You've connected somewhere. There was a dude named um, Kane Lopez. Oh yeah. Who was like a young young guy, and uh, I had found out that he was sick. I didn't know him. But I'd seen him up in Sacramento. But Brian Kelly knew him, and I said, hey, man, you know Kane Lopez? And he goes, yeah. I said, I heard he's not doing very well, man. So I think when we land on Sunday in Burbank, you should go see him. And then I went to go see him, too, and I'd never met him. And I went in there, and he surprised to see me. His dad was there. I paid for his funeral, man. Oh, wow. Because they didn't have the money. And I thought, we're soldiers, and that's what yeah, that's what one you do. would do to take care of the other one. So. God bless you. Yeah, man. I mean, I worry now. Uh, which is yeah. what we should do. You know, we should. Yeah, you got to help our yeah, own. Yeah, yeah. My, 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 my good buddy that I've talked to you about before, the one, he's got stage four, can, stage four uh, cancer, lung. But he's, he's a crazy guy, and he's funny. So <laughs> he's a great, a great, great outlook on life. You know, the, the doctor said we can give you, uh, we're not going to operate. Uh, we can give you three to three to ten years. He says, I'll take oh. six. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and then he sits there and he says, hey, I know you're going through some shit, so, hey, if things go wrong with you, he says, are you going to be pissed off? Will it offend you if you, if I go to your services and I'm sitting right next to your wife with my arm around her? <laughs> you know, so he, he's a great guy. When well, I someone's got to take care of her, yeah. you know. When I talk to him, it's always about not how he's doing, it's how are you doing. Yeah. I know, man. Always concerned more for me. And uh, I, if I learn nothing else from my dad, that's what my dad was. My dad would, when he was dying of cancer and he had lung cancer, and he'd sit there, how are you doing, Dad? Well, I, I'm not doing too good today. Forget about me, though. How are you? How are the kids? You know, always concerned for everybody else. That's, yeah. that's a great trait. It's a noble and feeling. When, when, when you sit there and say that. Uh, but you know, this businessman can make you like a cop. It, it could desensitize you to real feelings because there's a part of you you have to turn off in order to entertain. Yep. And then you have your wife and you have your kids where they don't have that part, but then you have to be able to 
to coexist with them sure. and not want to go hide, which I was one. I was always alone, anyways. So when I was married, I was always upstairs. <clears throat> <clears throat> and you can hide and say like, you know, it's part of my process, but it's not. It's just you just prefer to be by yourself. Yeah. Totally. Yeah. It's, yeah. There's something about being able to. We get you do have to turn off pieces of you as a comic. So when you have to check back into reality and feel feelings with other people. It is weird because the way we have to temper all that stuff because you're just used to the bullshit. Even if it's like, let's go have breakfast, you know, Sunday at 10. We're back by 2. You're like, how about 2? Fucking, uh, all right. <laughs> where? Oh, yeah, where? Uh, how far? Hey, where yeah. am I going? <laughs> yeah. Because, you know, you people recognize you, right? You're going to play yeah. and recognize yeah. you. And that, that's a trip, too. Yeah. Because all of a sudden it's like, hey, are you? And then... Yeah, it's, sometimes, it's, sometimes, it's okay sometimes. And then sometimes you're really not in the mood for it. But, it, it, you know... I'm always gracious of it. I said that one time. I was like, those people pay my mortgage, man, so I'm happy to mm -hmm. see them. Yeah. But also, sometimes if you're in a shitty mood, right. people expect you to be happy and engaging all the time. There's times where you wish you could have a tag on that's like, not today. Not so a shitty day today. <laughs> yeah, just, we have shitty days too. So up in, uh, in Silmar at the Olive View Hospital, my grandmother was in the hospital. My grandmother raised me. This was like August... Uh, 2009. I was doing my talk show. I was getting ready to do my talk show, but the show had syndicated. And uh, I went in there and I talked to my grandmother about, like, just, you know, she was in a coma about going and stuff like that. And then she had passed away. And they were going to take her downstairs. And, you know, that guy said, you, you know, it's nothing you can do. And I went downstairs and they saw me downstairs. My grandmother just died. I mean, she raised me. And they're like, hey, can we take a picture with this? I, ah, yeah, come on. Come on, take a picture. And, and you, you didn't say, like, hey, my grandma just died. I'm yeah. Like, oh, no, come on. Yeah, it's all right. And yeah. I did the five or six or whatever, then got in my car and went. But I never thought about saying no because they don't know, but they'll be like, hey, fuck that guy. It's but weird, not, man. Not yeah. Knowing. It's crazy. You're, huh? you're not allowed to do what they would Turn do. Turn it off. Yeah. Yeah. It's strange sometimes. That that It, it is strange because you're like, I get it. They don't know. And if you explain it to them, it's going to be even weirder. <laughs> You know, that you're like, hey, I don't want to do that. My my, my grandmother's dead. Yeah. yeah, and like, then hey, they're like, man. yeah, but you're a comedian, right? And you're like, yeah, fuck it. <laughs> <laughs> you're great. Yeah. Tell us a joke about it. Yeah, just, yeah, they think you're full of shit. Right, listen, man, just, hey, yeah. I, I didn't work today. I didn't think I was going to see it. I got my cow, I got my kids right here. Your grandma died? All right. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so man. so um, are, what's in the future? Are you doing movies or are you doing... I did a couple of movies. I did a couple of Netflix movies. I did one with Kevin Hart, which was great. I actually did the remake of that house party movie. They're, oh. they, yeah, they're putting, they're putting out the, like, the new okay. generation oh, of it. Wow, yeah, man, I did a couple awesome, of scenes man. in that. It was fun. But I did a movie with Kevin Hart and Mark Wahlberg that'll come out. Because uh, Kevin Hart does uh, Dave, right? They're, they're part of... He's, a pretty, he's, a, he's an EP, yeah. He's one of... Heart, Heartbeat is uh, one of the... Nine. Uh, yeah, there's yeah, a bunch of guys. It's, it's wild these there's days. Good, every card, every card. You're like, who's that? There's who's some who's that? Fucking dudes in that. Yeah, that's, it's, yeah. No, it's it's a it's a heavily pushed show by the train. But I like it. I, li thank I you, like man. it. I think it, it's, it really I think is it's phenomenal. Important. Yeah, it's fun. It's a good show. Bad. We're gonna do that again in June. Uh, those couple of movies will come out at some point, and then I'm touring now until mm, April, I think, and then I'm done. In April, I'm gonna take a month off. I'm going to Europe for a month. But for a, spe oh, for a special? They, if, for a special? They, no, or, I, I'm or just going to go. I just want to get out. Of, I just want to get away for good. a while. Right. Yeah, I want to shoot a special sometime right before the summer. That's the plan. What we would just, you do it for, net, for Netflix or what I would you do? I don't know. I think I'm going to do it on my own. Oh. Yeah, I think I'm going to do it on my own. I, I like. I, I've been talking about it for a long time um, about self distribution. Just because you know, I know I'm not that big like how like Louis puts his out and you buy yeah, his Louis on. Yeah. But I think the model is great because you're like the model is great. It goes to go. You the money goes it. to you. You control all the elements. No one's telling you what you can and can't say. There's no like programming ideas. They have to slot you in a, a way in a month and a time. I just don't want to deal with that stuff. I think I don't know. I mean, I'm not 100, percent but I think I'm going to do that. Finish up and then we want to get away for like a month. Go to Europe Good. and just disappear for a while. And that's then come back and shoot season three of Dave, and yeah. that'll be that. That's an awesome, that's an awesome show, man. Thank it. you, brother. Yeah. And how, how's it going in Chicago? You're gonna be the yeah. The, I'm gonna do the Chicago, Chicago theater, theater, but I t I'm gonna be there February 5th. When is this out? Is this out soon? Mm -hmm. uh, this will probably be next week, Monday. All right, good. So yeah, February 5th, I'm gonna be there. Uh, At the Chicago Theater, Chicago the, the theater, homeboys man. coming back it's to my Chicago. Home, hometown show. I'm excited. Some of the Chicago Bulls are going to come, which makes me feel I've like I've done the Chicago Theater it. a few times. It's beautiful. It's wild. I did it once with Rogan. when I, I used to tour with Joe Rogan a few times. Yep. Like He would take me out. I did it with him once. 
<clears throat> and I was sitting back there and the stage manager was like, he's like, yeah, I was like, this is incredible, man. When it was closed, you know, and they kick everyone out and you just are right. looking at this empty space. He's like, you'll do it. And I was like, the fuck out of here, man. I thought he was being a smart ass. He's like, you'll do it, man. I was like, I don't know, man. You don't know me. You don't know if I'm going to be able to do it. And then cut, you know, two and a half years later, I'm going to do in, it. In, uh, 19, nuts, nuts. in 1989, nuts, man. We, we went to, we did Ski Patrol. We did in Utah. And then Roger Rose was from Chicago. Mm -hmm. Me and Roger, P Paul Feig, director, and Steve Heidner went to hang out with Roger in Chicago. And Roger had a buddy, Larry Jacobson, that wrote for Letterman. Letterman was doing a week at the Chicago Theater. Buddy guy. Jay Leno, Michael Jordan. Damn. And we sat in the Chicago theater, and I never thought that I would sell that place out four times or whatever the fuck. It, but it's one of my... It's incredible, One man. of my prized It uh, means a lot to me to come home and to go be able to do it. I mean, it's... Because it's beautiful. So pretty, man. <clears throat> the so side door, you you walk upstairs, those cement stairs, and yeah. you have that nice room over there, and then oh, you walk man. down, and yeah. you turn, and you go back. It's 100 there. years old, too, which is nuts It's beautiful, man. Like he's showing it to him. Yeah, it's stunning. It's so wow. I haven't seen the inside. Before. 100 years old. It's, yeah. It's and, and, it's, and it's restored. Al Capone's booth is still there. His booth is... Uh, of the first row of those those booths, you know, the... the what do they what do they call those seats? Why can't I think of those? You know, but like on the first ah, balcony. Orchestra, like, yeah, yeah, yeah. Sure. yeah. That, that pit, yeah they, that. This is the first Do they there. keep that one open or does people, oh, people can sit in it? Oh. But actually what's wild is the reason that it's the furthest left, the, the stage manager told me, is because across the street, right across the street is uh, a building that one of their affiliates owned. And it, it was one of the only buildings at the time that had an elevator that could go from street level to basement level so Al could get down and out oh. into a car and be gone. And I said, oh, if he's, you know, if it's from someone in the theater trying, trying to come get him. And he's like, no, it's always the cops. Because the cops ah. will always be like two steps behind him and they, they were always chasing him down and stuff. So when he went out for an entertainment night, he'd get away with a, an hour or two of being out and then cops would yeah. try to come get him because they know something's yeah. going on. He's never uh, seen any play end. <laughs> yeah, no, like yeah, he's only seen half a play. Every, Intermission yeah. is, they made so, it for him. They're like, <laughs> so, he's got to get out of here. <laughs> that place is haunted. Oh, That's for sure. Theater. There's I, no I doubt. I was uh, doing a meet and greet <clears throat> and then, uh, you know, you're meeting people right here. I stand right there and I felt somebody go like this and I went... I went right there, I go, something just touched my right arm right here, pulled me. And the, and, the, and the usher goes, yeah, 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 yeah. He's like, yeah, that's <laughs> they do that. They're, yeah. they're in here. Even the like, ghost Almost pictures. like two fingers where you could, you could feel the person. Yeah, I don't you. like that. Yeah, that's haunted for sure. You can tell. When you go, some of the backs of those old theaters, uh, it, man, it gives you, because there's so much weird history there too, that it really, like, you feel it in your chest. They're when you go there. to the bowels of them, it's, it's weird. Cement. Just they're when in, I was they're beginning they're to believe in, in you, you'd stay away from that shit. You're going to go back. No, no, no. You <laughs> know what? Fuck it, around it, with it, but you, <laughs> feel, you feel something in those rooms. They're yeah. so old. And, and the thousands and thousands of performers that have been through there over the years. And it's just you can't help but feel some and kind you know, of energy in there. The stairs are cement. So they're not like they're tile. No, they're yeah, cement. They're cement, cold cement, cement, cement. Yeah. All the way up, down, turn right, go yeah. back down the stage, back up. And that room is in there, and you see whoever, uh, you know, Buddy Guy, you see yeah. uh, uh, all the members of whatever band sitting in that room that you're sitting in on the couch right there. It feels, it like, feels wild. That's awesome. the same way I feel about the store. Whenever I, whenever I go down stage, there's always a, a moment on the main room floor that I'm like, man, the guys that used to tape specials at the store is so right. wild. When, the, when that main room had that HBO special and... It just it's it's weird to think about that of all well, the. I'm glad you're doing the Chicago there. Theater. Congratulations. Thank you, man. It's yeah. great to know you, man, and uh, thank you for doing the show. Appreciate brother. you, man. Did you introduce him? Great. No, we always do that at the end. Oh, <laughs> we just start talking. Do it now. Thanks. Thanks so much for coming out. Oh. He's the greatest. <laughs> uh, on the, previously on the podcast today, we had Andrew Santino, yeah. actor, <laughs> podcaster, comedian, golfer. Yeah, golfer. golfer. Yeah, we got to go play. We uh, got to go sticks. play, dude. Yeah, let's go. I'm in. And tune into uh, his podcast. If yeah, whiskey, else whiskey too. ginger and bad friends. Me and Bobby Lee have one, but whiskey ginger is the one where it's just me. George came on and did it. Bobby it Lee great. is. Uh, We're trying insane. to get him back on here. He's he'll he'll come back. He's insane. Ever. He is insane. Huh? Just psycho man. He's I, I with him got all nightmare. excited because he the, came the, in. The, is that the first the show? The very did? first show I did with George. And I didn't even know I was doing a podcast. I was invited to meet friends, mm -hmm. and I came in here and I sat right there. And Bobby Lee's here. And it was really a, a fun time for me. He's nuts. And he is nuts. He and shows I loved dick. him. And he said, No, there, he did uh, not. Yeah. He, he started crying, <laughs> to. literally boo hoo hooing, and then just picked up his t shirt and said, Motherfucker, stop, you're making me cry. I know. <laughs> and, and, and he wiped his tears. And today, in a message that I got from you, he, wants to, he said to say he hello said, to Gil. He said, yeah. Bobby said, Be sure and say hello to Gil. 
And I told her, I said, fuck, I pissed in my pants like a little puppy. Yeah. I mean, he remembered me, you know. Yeah, and, and he of was, course. It was fun. It was yeah, really and Bobby's good. like, you know, what did Bobby say? Like, hey, motherfucker, I, I'm, are you, you, you going to make it? Some bullshit. I said, fucking yes, finally somebody, you know. Um... Uh, are you gonna make he it? Goes, oh, I'm glad. Yeah, yeah. Tell tell Gil I said hi. Uh, you know, because I because I was sick New Year's Eve shit. And the thing the thing with that, the thing with New Year's Eve is, I didn't have COVID, but I have a kidney transplant, so I had upper respiratory and dehydration, and that's those are the dangers. Hmm. So uh, so I'm at home like and and like Bob like he's like eh, you know I'm okay. So you, if you cancel, you're a fucking asshole because there's shows and people bought tickets. But if you go, hey man, I, I don't feel really good, man. I don't think I should do. It. I don't think I should do it. And they'll be like, oh, this motherfucker's trying to bail out on New Year's Eve, which you're not trying to do. Mm -hmm. And then you go, and when I got up there, half hour in, twenty minutes in, I was sweating. You knew. I go, this is not good. And uh, I sat down. I got back up. Andrew, I saw a fucking red, fucking streak in front of me. I was like, what oh. the fuck is that? And I told my nurse, and he goes, yeah, you see red right before you drop. Yeah. Like you, 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 yeah, you pass out. I was I've seen that right before I passed out. Yeah. yeah. You passed out? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I passed out around here. It's a church. <laughs> we'll go to Vietnam. The Holy Spirit. Uh, thank you, brother. Thank I appreciate you, man. You, man. I appreciate my you. My man, dude. This is great. All right. Thank you. Hey. This was so this much so fun. fun. Thank, thank you, man. I appreciate it. You're the greatest. It.